Chapter 781, He is from the Exploding Heavens faction? What? Zuke was a bit surprised. The next moment, he suddenly recalled that he had never tried to activate the debt collector Beatsteaders back in the illusion world. Although he had only disappeared for a few days in the real world, in the illusion world, he had spent a total of a few decades. If it were not for the notification of the system, he would have almost forgotten the debt collector Beatsteaders. By the way, it takes me a few decades to activate the debt collector beats debtors? Screw you. You have to give me a good reason for this delay. You told me it only takes a decade to activate it, and now a few decades have passed. Zuke summoned the system and questioned it. The system answered coldly, the host is in a different place from the debt collector beats debtors, so it would take some time to send it and for you to activate it. There could be a bit of glitches in this process but it is all within the normal range. You call this being normal? You call a few decades being normal? Zuke glared. The system reserves all the rights for final explanation. Screw you. Dot. At last, Zuke logged out of the system, feeling a bit cross. Still, he was also quite happy, since in the illusion world, although a few decades have passed, in the real world, just under 15 days have passed. According to the system, I would receive the debt collector beat stutters in less than 10 days. Then I would be able to make connections with people on Earth. Zuke got very excited and did not bother to teach Buttface a lesson. He turned around and went back to the mansion happily. On the same day, the 10 cultivators of the Gong family came to the city and told Zuke that the Scarlet Yang faction had been wiped out. They had to take the head of the Scarlet Yang faction, Shang Ling back and wait for the orders from the head of the Gong family before they executed Shang Ling. Zhu Ke was fine with this news and waved his hands, asking them to leave. Before they left, Zhu Ke warned them that they should never ever come to the Five Elements Mountain again. The cultivators of the Gong family nodded and left in a cowardly fashion. Zhu Ke. Si Chu Hai Tang came later that afternoon. She stood in front of Zhu Ke looking very smart. Is everyone from the Exploding Heavens faction as proud as you? She frowned. What? Zuke was a bit surprised and shook his head. How do you come up with this? We are all very modest. As modest as the saints back in the ancient times. Hearing this, Si Chu Hai Tang rolled her eyes. You must be joking. You are not a modest man at all. Of course I am. Never mind. What is going on? Someone comes, claiming to kill me? Zhu Ke smiled. Si Chu Hai Tang was a bit impatient. Just now, a soldier came to tell me that a cultivator from the Fire Nation wants to live in the city governor's mansion. He also said that he is a member of the Exploding Heavens faction. It seems that my mansion has become a branch of your faction. What? A cultivator from the Fire Nation claims himself to be a member of the Exploding Heavens faction? Zhu Ke was surprised, his eyes wide open. What's going on? I have no idea who this person might be. By the way, he is really arrogant to want to have a room here in the mansion. Why are you so surprised? In the past few years, more and more people are getting to know about the existence of the Exploding Heavens faction, in particular in the Fire Nation. Even people in small cities like Snow City know about the Exploding Heavens faction. Zuke was shocked. Something must be wrong, all these years. It is me who has been impersonating all the other members of the Exploding Heavens faction. This cultivator must obviously be a fake one. The cultivator of the Exploding Heavens faction is here. A soldier shouted. So, this is the city governor's mansion? How shabby it is. A noble man like me can never possibly live in such a place. The cultivator walked inside proudly. He looked around in disgust and gave orders to the soldier. Do what I have told you on the way here. Don't mess it up. You know what will happen to you when you piss off a member of the Exploding Heavens faction. This. The soldier looked like he was in a very difficult situation. Then he began to look at Zhu Ke and Si Chu Hai Tang who were standing in the hall. What? You are not willing to do what I have told you? The cultivator scolded the soldier and turned around. When he turned around, he saw Zuke and Si Chu Hai Tang. How dare you? Si Chu Hai Tang was very cross. Zuke gave a funny look and was sure that this cultivator was not a member of the Exploding Heavens faction, 
but a total liar. The cultivator looked at Si Chu Hai Tang and sneered. If I am right, you must be the city governor of Snow City. I have heard a lot about you from Zhu K. I come to bring you some words from him. But I never thought even a little soldier here could be so arrogant. I just asked a small favor from him and he still refused. You call this being hospitable? Hearing this, Si Chu Hai Tang was in a daze and looked at Zhu Kei with big surprise. So did the soldier. Zhu Kei almost burst into laughter, but he still managed to suppress his feelings. I see. You are one of the elites of the Exploding Heavens faction. I have met Zhu Kei once. I wonder how is everything going with him? He is fine. I have been drinking with him the past few days, and he told me that he saved the entire Snow City and said that anyone of the Exploding Heavens faction would receive a warm welcome here and that only the most distinguished guests would receive him when he comes here. Now, I am very disappointed, the cultivator said with a gloomy face. Hearing this, both Si Chu Hai Tang and the soldier realized that he was a liar. I see. Would you mind telling me why you are upset and what have you asked the soldier to do for you? Hearing this, the soldier answered, when he got into the city, he happened to see the lady of the Lin family. He thinks she is quite a gorgeous woman, so he asked me to bring her into his room tonight. Wow, I never knew cultivators from the Exploding Heavens faction would do such a thing. Zhu Kei sneered, hearing this. The cultivator was infuriated. How dare you, who do you think you are? You have no right to tell me what is right and what is not right. Zhu Kei raised his hand and gently touched his hair and smiled. What a coincidence. My name is Zhu Kei, and people also call me Prince Charming. Dot. Chapter 782, Here I Am. Hearing this, the cultivator was completely stunned. Then his body began to shiver uncontrollably, and he said, you dot you dot you are Zhu Kei? Yes, I am Zhu Kei. By the way, can you tell me when did I ever have a drink with you before? Zhu Kei smiled. A ball of frightening power erupted from him and spread in all directions. Bang! The cultivator collapsed onto the ground and his face became as white as a sheet. Zhu Kei stopped smiling and sneered. How dare you? How dare you go around and lie to others using the name of the Exploding Heavens faction? I dot I dot I never knew you were here. I... The cultivator was too afraid to say a full sentence. He had been hearing about Zhu Kei for a long time and he knew what a cruel man he was. I should at least have known what Zhu Kei looked like before I went around trying to fool others. My goodness, why on earth have I come and acted tough here? So, if I had not been here today, you would have forced a young woman to be your mistress using the name of the Exploding Heavens faction? How dare you do such a horrible thing? Zhu Kei said, furious. This time, he was really pissed off. Although he had also looted people's houses before, he still had his own bottom line, which was that he would never force a woman to become his mistress. In his view, this was tantamount to raping a woman. On earth, the criminal who was put into prison for raping women would be despised and bullied by other criminals, even a murderer would punish them. In Zhu Kei's view, women should be cherished and, in some cases, Men could flirt with women. Anyone who forced a woman to do something she did not want to do should be severely punished. This man must have done such a thing many times before he came here. Since the first thing he did as soon as he stepped into this city was to ask the soldier to bring a woman to his room. Worse still, he did all this using the name of the Exploding Heavens faction. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I will never do such a thing ever again. The man knelt in front of Zhu Kei and freaked out. Nonsense, I hate your kind the most. Zhu Kei cursed and hit him. Bang. The cultivator was blown away by the energy of Zhu Kei's hit and hit the wall. He fell onto the ground and began to cough blood. Zhu Kei then said, hang him on the city wall and flick his manhood ten thousand times. Remember, don't let him die before this is done. The soldier hurriedly answered, yes. Then he dragged the cultivator out of the hall rather excitedly. This sort of thing happens a lot, and there is no need to be so angry about this, Si Chu Hai Tang said gently. Zhu Kei calmed himself down and shook his head. I am just terribly upset by what he has done. Then I think you would be angry all day long. Si Chu Hai Tang said with a serious face. What do you mean? Zhu Kei asked. Si Chu Hai Tang forced out a smile. As far as I am concerned. 
This sort of thing happens quite a lot in the Fire Nation and no one can do anything about it, really, because people are all afraid of the Exploding Heavens faction, so no one dares to put them under the law. Obviously, Sichu Hai Tang was implying that it was Zhu Kei's fault for making the Exploding Heavens faction such an intimidating faction. This had given the cowards the opportunity to do bad things using the name of the Exploding Heavens faction. Fire Nation, good, I happen to have some errands back there. It seems that it is time for me to teach a lesson to those thugs. Zhu Kei said with a very cold look. Dot. The next day, Zhu Kei headed to the Fire Nation together with Buttface. He wanted Si Chu Hai Tang to go with him, but she refused, which made him a bit upset. When he was about to walk into the teleportation device, Si Chu Hai Tang hurriedly ran up to him and gave him a piece of letter. Open it when you are in the Fire Nation. Then she hurriedly left, with her face as red as an apple. Open it, don't listen to her. Let me see what she has written. Buttface was very curious. Bang! Zhu Kei slapped Buttface and quickly put the letter into the system's parcel. Since the teleportation device had been activated, if he did not do so, the letter would be shredded into pieces. Dot. Seven days later, the two arrived at the Fire Nation. Compared with the four great continents, the Five Elements Mountain was not big at all, so the teleportation devices here were not that efficient and it took a longer time to cover a short distance. As soon as Zhu Kei stepped onto the soil of the Fire Nation, he sharpened his eyes. Buttface, I now command you as my vice chief. Arrest people who do bad things using the name of the Exploding Heavens faction. Zhu Kei said in a deep voice. Buttface glared at Zhu Kei. No, unless you allow me to be the vice president of the Exploding Heavens faction. Great. This is exactly what I want. I will not make you the vice president of the Exploding Heavens faction and I don't want you to interfere with the business this time. Zhu Kei said. Screw you. How shameless you are. Count on me. I will help you arrest the bad apples. Never mind. Zhu Kei smiled. Then he summoned the system and took out the letters Si Chu Hai Tang had given him. As soon as he saw the beautifully written words, he was stunned. Come back once you finish this business. My parents want to meet you. See me? Her parents want to see me? My goodness. What should I do? Zhu Kei took a deep breath. What are you reading? Let me have a look. Buttface came close to Zhu Kei. Bang. Zhu Kei slapped Buttface again. It's none of your business. Get out of here and arrest the bad apples. Screw you. Buttface was very angry and scolded. Wait here. I will report this to your old girlfriend here. Then he hurriedly ran away, much quicker than Zhu Kei probably. It seemed that Buttface had grown much more powerful than he was in the past. Maybe this had a lot to do with the blood of his ancestor that he got at the mysterious land in the South Continent. Zhu Kei was running in the opposite direction. Buttface, you are running in the wrong direction. You are running to the border of the Gold Nation. Don't you remember that your old girlfriend is the Dowager Countess of the Gold Nation? Buttface answered. Speaking of the Dowager Countess of the Gold Nation, she asked me to give her some elixir a few years ago. Should I give it to her or not? Of course not, if she wants it, she should come and fetch it herself. Then he wrote something on a piece of a traditional Chinese talisman and flicked it into the air. In the blink of an eye, the talisman changed into a ray of golden light and flew to the Gold Nation. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. A figure ran past Zhu Kei. Buttface turned around to look at Zhu Kei, while running very quickly. What a fool you are. I was just kidding with you before. I am going to the Fire Nation. I am very marvelous, aren't I? Bang! Buttface ran into a mountain and the mountain was crushed all of a sudden. What a joke! Zhu Kei laughed and headed to the Fire Nation. Madam Ya, I am coming. Su Linger and Su Ziaki, I am coming. And in less than two days, my SIM card will be delivered. Dot. Chapter 783, The City Manager of the Exploding Heavens Faction The sun was shining brightly in the Fire Nation, and, as usual, it was very warm. Zhu Kei and Buttface were behaving themselves and did not attract any attention at all. Zhu Kei had changed his appearance with a mask and was in a white robe looking exactly like a gentle scholar. Zhu Kei walked into the city first and left Buttface behind, in case someone spotted Buttface. However, 
His outfit still attracted many people's attention. A gentle and handsome scholar like Zhu Ke was rather rare here in the Fire Nation. In the past, Li Bei, a scholar of the Exploding Heavens faction, came here. But since then, no one had ever seen such a gentle scholar. The reason why Zhu Ke could attract so many people's attention was that, under the surface of his gentle-looking demeanor, there was a bit of a frolicker about him. It was well known that women fell for bad boys. With many young women watching, Zuke casually walked into a inn. Welcome. What can I do for you? A male servant welcomed him. I want to kill people. Zuke said, while smiling. He quickly took out a pen-like object that was a foot in length. It was a stainless steel judgment pen. Its head was sharp and thin while its handle was thick and round. Zhu Ke then hit a wooden desk next to him with the stainless steel judgment pen. Bang! In the blink of an eye, the wooden desk exploded and turned into a pile of ashes. Seeing this everyone in the inn was shocked. There was complete silence. The male servant was in a daze and stood still like a scarecrow, while staring at Zhu Ke. Bang! The manager of the inn hit heavily on a desk and yelled. How dare you? How dare you make a scene in the Exploding Heavens faction inn? Are you insane? Hearing this, Zhu Ke sneered. The reason he had walked into this inn was because he saw the name of the inn. Judging by the name of the inn, the owner might be one of Zhu Ke's acquaintances, for example, Madame Ya or Su Linger. But the price of the dishes here were all too high, which was why Zhu Ke realized this inn was not run by one of his acquaintances. He found that even an extremely ordinary dish was sold with the price of 300 spiritual stones. Most strikingly, Zhu Ke's name was right next to the picture of the dish. Obviously, the owner must also be a liar who does bad things using the name of the Exploding Heavens faction. I will teach you, a bunch of liars, a good lesson today. Zhu Ke said, while brandishing his stainless steel judgment pen around. Bang! In the blink of an eye. All the chairs and desks fell into pieces and changed into ashes that flew away with the wind. Everyone in the inn was stunned. What is going on? He must be mad, otherwise, he would never dare to offend the Exploding Heavens faction. Interesting. All these years, no one ever dared to speak against the Exploding Heavens faction. But this young man, this young man is really powerful. With only one shot. He managed to crush all the chairs and desks into ashes without hurting anyone around. People fell into heated discussions, and even people outside the inn began to gather around the inn. You piece of crap, I swear I will kill you. The manager was so furious that his fat body began to tremble. He shouted loudly, arrest him, arrest this jerk. Show him the consequences of making a scene in the region controlled by the Exploding Heavens faction. Bang! A few cultivators of the infant transformation stage quickly appeared. At the same time, people from the stores that also contained Exploding Heavens faction on their shop signs came to help the manager. I never thought there were so many of you. Just as the saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. Zhu Ke strode forward while despising them and waving his stainless steel judgment pen. All of a sudden, countless silver threads burst out from the tip of the stainless steel judgment pen and penetrated the hands and feet of the manager. The manager was dragged backward. Ouch! The manager screamed with immense pain. Stop! Those who came to help the manager shouted all together and dashed to Zhu Ke when they saw the manager suffering. Zhu Ke stared at them coldly and waved his fist at them without even looking at them. Bang, bang, bang. The next moment, a few of them were directly blown away by the power wave and hit at a transparent wall. In the blink of eye, they all died. There was complete silence. People present were so shocked that their faces all turned as white as sheets. This young man is dot is. With only one shot, he killed almost ten cultivators of the infant transformation stage. He must be at the infant transformation stage. Otherwise, he cannot be able to do so. How can a young man like him be this terribly powerful? Ah! The manager who was floating in the air and restricted by the power of the stainless steel judgment pen screamed with terror. He looked at Zhu Ke in great shock and asked, Who are you? At the same time, everyone was watching Zhu Ke. People present were all very curious about him and wondered why he would do such a thing to the exploding heavens faction. Zhu Ke smiled 
showing off his bright white teeth. I am Zonkua, the legendary city manager of the Exploding Heavens faction. What? Zonkua, the legendary city manager of the Exploding Heavens faction? What is going on? He is also a member of the Exploding Heavens faction? Why on earth did he do such a thing to the manager then? You dot you dot you. The manager got more frightened and could not even properly enunciate a word. He was really scared this time, since he knew that he did not really belong to the Exploding Heavens faction at all. Now the real member of the Exploding Heavens faction appeared right in front of him. I have met many stupid liars before, but it is the first time for me to see stupid liars making trouble in broad daylight. Do you really think I would allow you to do bad things using the name of the Exploding Heavens faction? Zuke said coldly. Hearing this, everyone present was stunned. The Exploding Heavens faction in is a fake one? I have nothing to do with this. Zonkua, I am innocent. I am just taking orders from His Royal Highness. The manager accidentally let out who the person was who was behind all these lies. His Royal Highness? So what? He is just nothing compared with the Exploding Heavens faction. So you mean you trick others by the order of His Royal Highness? Never mind. My obligation is to maintain the rule. It is fine for you to use the name of the Exploding Heavens faction, but doing bad things with the name of the Exploding Heavens faction shall never be forgiven. Zuke then took out a thick object, which was a iron chain made with a silver hook. In the blink of an eye, the hook penetrated the manager's chest and the manager died on the spot. Zuke then dragged the dead manager out of the inn with a smile on his face and everyone watching him in surprise. He looked like a cold-blooded feudal official who was about to wipe all the bad from across the Imperial City. Dot. Chapter 784 The Real Advocates It's terrible. It's terrible. What shocking news. It's been exposed that those so-called Exploding Heavens faction inns in the Fire Country for the past few years are all fake. The real sovereign of the Exploding Heavens faction is here trying to maintain the order of the Imperial City. His name is Zong Kua, and he calls himself our city inspector. He's terrifying. As soon as he appeared, he instantly killed several original infant stage fighters. To finish it off. He has slain the shopkeeper of the fake Exploding Heavens faction ends with a chain. He's now dragging the corpses down the street. Dot. Suddenly, the whole Fire Nation's Imperial City fell into chaos. Zuke was dragging a chain with a corpse slowly down the street. Behind him, countless people followed at a distance. They were dying to see the action, but dared not go too near. When the Imperial Guards arrived, they were too afraid to ask a single question. Instead, they immediately turned around and rushed to the palace to report the news. Several shops operating in the Imperial City with signs identifying them as of the Exploding Heavens faction were horrified at the news. They hurriedly closed their stores, as the blood drained from their faces. However, that did not stop Zuke. He had just reached a weapons store called the Exploding Heavens faction weaponry. While the shop gates were closed, with his powerful soul strength he had sensed people's presence within the shop. With a flick of his chain, he smashed the store gates with a huge bang. The people inside were so frightened that they fell paralyzed on the ground. You dot what are you doing? We work for the Lord. You. The shopkeeper tried to speak, but he before he could finish, Zuke had already thrown the iron chain at him. Whip. The hook pierced his chest and the shopkeeper collapsed with a muffled sound. With a pull backward. Zuke dragged him out of the shop, spilling blood all over the floor. Order is to be maintained. Garbage should stay in the garbage dump. Said an expressionless Zuke. He waved his hand and a huge barrel appeared, into which he threw in the bodies of the two shopkeepers. Then, he continued to move toward the next store. Several beaters and servants in the shop were scared out of their wits, but finally sighed in relief when he left. Zuke had let them off killing only the shopkeepers. After all, most of these servants and beaters were deceived, thinking that they were working for the Exploding Heavens faction. Thus, Zuke had no reason to blame them. However, the people in charge were in the know. These people must be punished, none of them could be forgiven. Operation Counter Counterfeit, it a war until everyone's afraid of it. Bang. Next. Zuke went directly to a building named Exploding Heavens Faction Bookstore. He instantly smashed the door. To his surprise, 
There were several scholars sitting around writing manuscripts. Zhu Kate took a casual glance and was instantly furious. These people were fabricating the history of the Exploding Heavens faction, shaping it into an unsightly and warped fiction. Some were even writing of them as a repulsive force that did only evil. Useless bums. Zhu Ke bellowed and threw the chain at the scholars. Boom. The entire bookstore collapsed within seconds. Zhu Ke tore out several bloody bodies from the ruins and tossed them into the garbage can. Whoever shames the exploding heavens faction will be hunted down and killed, no matter how far away they may be. Zhu Ke growled as he marched onward. On this day, he had cleaned out every single fraudulent shop in the Imperial City swindling in the name of the Exploding Heavens faction. What he did threw the Imperial City into chaos, and many people were too frightened to go out. It's so scary that Zon Kui from the Exploding Heavens faction is a real Death Reaper. Have you heard the news? Not just Zon Kui, but even Zhu Kei's dog has reappeared. Really? True as toast. Someone saw that the dog rushed into a sham Exploding Heavens faction restaurant, robbed all their food, then spit so much saliva on the shopkeeper that he drowned. Holy cow. Can that even be done? Slam. That's what it did. Dot. Night may have fallen. But Zhu Kei's Operation Counter Counterfeit was far from over. He had just met up with Buttface. Now that they had cleaned out all the shops on the surface, it was time to track down the cultivators who, under the name of the Exploding Heavens faction, had scammed and swindled all the citizens. Buttface had collected many reports from the market, all of which were the names and information of cultivators who had claimed to be part of the Exploding Heavens faction. Lad, according to a warm hearted, Undisclosed member of the public, Lu Benwei, as well as my own organizing skills, these people can be roughly divided into four or five groups of forces. They are all distributed in the outskirts of the city, each occupying a territory. Buttface said excitedly with a map in hand. He was always the happiest when an operation put him in the limelight. Come, we'll continue with the cleanup. Zhu Kei took over the map from Buttface's hands. After checking the distribution of forces, he quickly headed toward the outskirts of the city. The night soon turned pitch black. Zhu Kei and Buttface came to a territory outside the city. Back when he had left, it was simply a barren hill. Now, it was filled with gleaming lights and many manors. All of the buildings were luxuriously decorated. It was apparent that all these took a lot of manpower and resources. Crap. Young lad, this isn't fair. Why are these imposters of the Exploding Heavens faction living more comfortably than us? Buttface barked indignantly. Then we will destroy it. Zhu Kei sneered, as he flung his chain. Boom. Immediately, the main door of a manor collapsed. Then, after some rustling, many figures emerged from the manors. How dare you barge into the first branch of the Exploding Heavens faction? came a robust roar. Zhu Kei sneered coldly, his gaze fixed at the mansion in front of him. From his soul's strength telepathy, he sensed that in the mansion's basement, there were a lot of frail mortals and cultivators. The most harrowing fact was that all who were held captive were women. Zhu Kei didn't need more information to guess what they were doing. The world may change, but chaos and debris continue to flow. You people are a bunch of damn garbage. He said with a cold voice as he flung the chain. The long iron chain shone coldly in the faint moonlight. A wisp of bone freezing fire climbed the chain, sweeping straight ahead. Boom. Dozens of cultivators who rushed ahead froze into ice the instant they were hit by the freezing fire. With a sweep of the cable, they all burst into icy smithereens. What? Those who came from behind stood in disbelief, their faces horrified. You dot who are you? Some people shrieked as they stared at Zhu Kei. Zhu Kei smiled, devoid of all emotion. Zon Ku of the Exploding Heavens faction, as his voice fell off, an even bigger cold fire consumed the whole manor. Damn, fantastic, my boy, now that's refreshing. You have crushed the court. Buttface shouted excitedly. Zhu Kei was too lazy to reply to this idiot. He quickly entered the manor and freed all the women in the basement. To his relief, 
They had not been humiliated by the counterfeiters as he had thought. They were brought here as blood sacrifices to help those scums practice demonic arts. Zhu Kei explained to them that the manor people were just imposters of the Exploding Heavens faction. He then supplied them with a lot of medicine before leaving for the Second Territory. However, Zhu Kei couldn't believe his eyes when he reached there. The Second Territory was simple and run down. Many houses that the cultivators lived in were temporarily constructed, surrounded by flags that had a variety of slogans on them. The Exploding Heavens faction is invincible. The Exploding Heavens faction is mighty. The Exploding Heavens faction are all sovereigns. Join the Exploding Heavens faction and reach the peak of life. The Exploding Heavens faction appears. All they leave is a thread and a single needle. The Exploding Heavens faction goes to war, not a blade of grass would grow. The Exploding Heavens faction commoner is so handsome. The myriad of colorful slogans was inserted all over the mountains. Together they looked just like rows of bullet comments on videos, leaving Zuke in a daze. Strangely enough, in this small territory, there were many wounded cultivators lying all around. The rest who were unhurt were all busy helping them heal. Well, what's with this situation? Are there other people cracking down on these imposters too? Buttface was shocked. Zuke's expression turned serious. Then he shook his head slightly. No, from these slogans, I can confirm that they are the real advocates of the Exploding Heavens faction. They are the real talents of our faction. What? How did the talents of the Exploding Heavens faction fall into this sort of living conditions? Buttface was taken aback. Pa, Zuke gave Buttface a slap on the head and glared. You don't know anything. Isn't it obvious that they've been played? The real supporters of the Exploding Heavens faction are a group of naive, kind, and simple children. They suck at conspiracies. That's why they are now like this. Gosh. How do you know they are all real supporters? Buttface asked, displeased. By intuition, ask them, if you don't believe me. Zuke laughed as he entered that territory. Chapter 785, Level Up, Act Tough Saint. Who's that? The cultivators perked up at Zuke and Buttface's arrival. Everyone stood up at once. Some even grabbed their weapons and pointed them at Zuke angrily and nervously. Zuke smiled. I am Zonkui from the Exploding Heavens faction. I have come after receiving orders. I am tasked to clean up the imposters of the Exploding Heavens faction. The Exploding Heavens faction. The cultivators were stunned by his words. Then someone yelled. You guys again. You swindle us and cheat us in the name of the Exploding Heavens faction. Now, what are you doing? You're framing us. Do you intend to kill us all? Bang. With a loud thud, a few big garbage bags fell out of the system parcel onto the floor. More than a dozen bodies rolled out of the bags. The cultivators were dumbstruck once they saw the corpses. Then, the crowd stirred. That dot that's the butler of the fake Exploding Heavens faction in. My god. It is him. Crap. He's the one who killed my wife and child. And that was the librarian of the fake Exploding Heavens faction library. He used to do whatever he wanted to do in the Imperial City. He only toned it down after Madame Ya was alerted. My god. Everyone who bullied the weak and did evil under the name of the Exploding Heavens faction. They're all here. Everybody turned towards Zuke at once. Their eyes passionate and agitated. You dot you are you a sovereign of the Exploding Heavens faction? Zuke smiled and nodded. That's right. The rest of us will arrive at the Imperial City soon. Buttface stepped out and said pridefully, Behold the vice faction leader of the Exploding Heavens faction. All of you, slap. Zuke covered Buttface's mouth before he could finish. However, everyone could hardly contain their excitement. They were quickly filled with euphoria. It's the real Exploding Heavens faction. I remember this dog. It's Zuke's pet. They are finally showing up. Five years. It's been five whole years. Many almost cried in agitation. Zuke was bewildered by their reaction. Fellow cultivators, aren't you guys overreacting? From what I understood, you guys are also guilty of posing as followers of the Exploding Heavens faction. No, we have never posed as the followers of the Exploding Heavens faction. The crowd was suddenly stern. We have always believed that the Exploding Heavens faction is the symbol of justice. Although every member is arrogant, lewd, and despicable, 
they still belong to the side of justice. That's why we have always tried to persuade the people that those rapists and oppressors were imposters of the exploding heavens faction. However, we were caught off guard by violent resistance. Therefore, we decided to band together to fend off all our enemies. What are you saying? Every man of the exploding heavens faction is innocent, kind, and pure-hearted. When have we ever been arrogant, lewd, or despicable? Outsiders simply misunderstand us. However, you guys have done well to defend the justice of the exploding heavens faction. All of you have made great sacrifices to uphold our justice. The cultivators quickly stopped him. Please don't say that fellow cultivator Zong Kua. It's just that we can't stand those scums who cause trouble while posing as the Exploding Heavens faction. Very good. As the Exploding Heavens faction's harbinger of justice, I announce that from now on, you guys are now great men of the Exploding Heavens faction. Tell me, who are the ones who hurt you? I, Zong Kua, will seek redress on your behalf. Everyone could hardly believe their ears. So we are now part of the Exploding Heavens faction, just like that? Ha, ha, we're finally part of the Exploding Heavens faction. Five years. We have waited for five whole years, to think that my dream would come true. The sacrifices we made over these five years have been worth it. Yeah, I broke out of jail from the Metal Nation to realize my dream to join the Exploding Heavens faction. Ha, how can you compare? I have lost my wife and son, for the sake of upholding the justice of the Exploding Heavens faction. HMPH, the things you guys just said were insignificant. Joining the Exploding Heavens faction has been my dream since I was a young kid. Many of them started to talk louder and louder, over each other, listing the hardships and grueling times they had suffered all this while. The more they boasted, the more shameless they became. The reason for this behavior was merely due to that one sentence by Zhu Kei, which helped them find a place to belong, the Exploding Heavens faction. Gentlemen, since you are now a part of the Exploding Heavens faction, these slogans. Zhu Kei murmured as he pointed at the slogans littered all over the mountains. The gang of cultivators immediately assured him. Fellow cultivators on Kua, don't worry, we will plant these slogans all over the whole world. Yes, that's right. We will plant them everywhere we go. Soon, the whole world will know our name. That will be our new dream. Li Bei from the Exploding Heavens faction once said that a man is no different from a salted fish if he has no dreams. That's why this dream shall be my new ambition from now on. The cultivators chattered excitedly. Their tone determined and staunch. Their words moved Zhu Kei. These are all talents, talents. He must absorb them into the faction. He nodded right away. Indeed, indeed. With your potential, you quickly understood my intentions and could even expand on the idea. All of you are surely talents who were born to be in the Exploding Heavens faction. From today onward, you guys shall be the marketing department of the Exploding Heavens faction. Remember. When you're planting the slogans, do it deftly and in a suave post. You must demonstrate how arrogant, lewd, or despicable. Puno, our naivete, kind heartedness, and lively cuteness. Yes. The group answered at once. Zuke generously pulled out a pile of medicinal pills and forcefully healed the wounded, helping the injured cultivators to recover quickly. Then, the whole gang followed him and Buttface as they charged onward to other territories. The third territory on the map was similar to the first. It was made up of different manners and looked pretty well off. However, this territory had beefier security. Before Zuke and his men could approach, the guards had already discovered them. Freeze. Who are you? How dare you barge into the branch of the Exploding Heavens faction? With a yell. A dozen guards spilled out from all directions. They ignored Zuke and fixed their gazes on the group behind him. They sneered once they saw who they were. It's the good for nothings with a death wish again. Looks like yesterday's lesson wasn't harsh enough. I see that you've come for round two. To dare offend us, the exploding heavens faction. Your only plight is to die. The guards laughed coldly. As the manor was brightly lit. Many people came out to see the commotion. A tightly packed group of people soon surrounded Zuke and his followers. Yo, you've got quite the group. Zuke snorted plainly. However, the cultivators behind him began to hesitate. After all, 
there were simply too many people in this territory. Furthermore, they are in an excellent position to summon backups swiftly and efficiently. It would be a fierce battle. Fellow cultivators on Kuwait, why don't we retreat for the time being? There will be no escape for them once the other sovereigns of the faction arrive. Someone whispered a suggestion to Zhu Kei. Zhu Kei frowned instantly and turned to that person. That's not the right mindset. As a member of the Exploding Heavens faction, it would be best if you did not fear any trouble. If people knew that you were frightened by this small group of people, you'd be a laughing stock. Everyone's mouths twitched at his words. A small group of people? Crap, bro. We have a total strength of less than 100, while our opponents count in the thousands. How is that a small group of people? Dot. The good thing is that no one ran away after he finished his speech. As cultivators who had fought with these imposters many times up until now, they were definitely not cowards. The people outside the manor, however, looked on leisurely with cruel smiles on their faces. Zuke turned around, relaxed and nonchalant. He looked at the cultivators and said, Remember. The motto of the Exploding Heavens faction is dot be unfazed by life and death, if they say no, beat them up till they say yes. As his words fell on the crowd, he whipped out the steel chain in his hands. Boom! A gush of powerful cold fire ignited the whole chain and swept it forward. This time, Zhu Kei did not suppress his strength. He executed this move with the full prowess of a void training stage cultivator. Boom! In an instant. The bleak white fire on the steel chain descended like the giant moon. It engulfed the few thousand of cultivators outside the manor. A split second was all it took. Before they could react, the few thousand cultivators were frozen into human eyes pillars. Then, the steel chain crashed down with unimaginable power, shattering all of the human eyes pillars into smithereens, drifting into the wind. It was only one move. It was only one split second. Out of the few thousand outside the manor, not a soul had survived Zhu Kei's attack. The group of cultivators behind Zhu Kei stood rooted to the ground, eyes stunned and mouths agape. At the same time, Zhu Kei had already collected his steel chain and said calmly, The next territory, TSSS. The crowd finally broke out of their daze and inhaled sharply their hearts fearful. They had expected nothing less from the exploding heavens faction sovereign. This prowess, this composure. He is matchless. Fellow cultivators on Kuwait. The next territory has. Suddenly, someone spoke up, sounding like he had recalled something. However, Zhu Kei cut him off before he could finish. Remember two points. When we, the exploding heavens faction, fight. We would never need to know how many we are up against or what cultivation stages they are at. The only things we need to know are the time and the place. The whole area fell utterly silent for a moment. Everyone was shaken by what he had said. They could not move an inch and stared silly at the back of Zuke, who seemed to glow mysteriously with that steel chain under the moonlight. Dot. At the same time, the system notification had already sounded in Zuke's head. Ding. Congratulations to the host Zuke for successfully acting tough. You have been rewarded with 2,400 acting tough points. Ding. Congratulations to the host Zuke for successfully acting tough. You have been rewarded with 3,200 acting tough points. Ding. Congratulations to the host Zuke for successfully acting a cold hearted tough. You have received a special reward of 5,000 acting tough points. Ding. Congratulations to the host Zuke for obtaining a new achievement acted a cold hearted tough. You have officially leveled up to act tough saint. All items in the system store will be available at a 20% discount. Ding. Host Zuke, please note that you have a new parcel ready to be received. Chapter 786. The SIM card is here. Mail. Zuke was startled by the system prompt. Then, Joy shone in his eyes. He immediately called up the system. There was a massive package on the interface, which read, Sender, Yi Kayu, Recipient, Zuke, My SIM card. Is it finally here? A smile graced Zuke's lips as he moved the parcel into the system's deposit storage with his mind. Subsequently, he led the team forward as he continued his anti-counterfeiting campaign. The only difference was that this time Zuke quickened the pace of his crackdown. Outside the city, in the fourth territory, Zuke stated, 
fellow cultivators on Kua. This territory is one of the most rampant abusers. They have robbed many villages and even sold their children. Boom. Without further words, Zuke lifted his wrists and flung the chain. The territory was instantly destroyed. Dot. In the fifth territory, once again Zuke stated, Fellow cultivators on Kua. The cultivators here are also abominable. They dubbed themselves the Heavenly Fuck Faction, while doing shady stuff. They even claimed that Zuke was the one who told them to call themselves the Heavenly Fuck Faction. What? Copycats. Destroy them. Zuke glared and threw the chains again. The whole manor was destroyed on the spot. Dot. That night. Zuke destroyed many forces that were imposters of the Exploding Heavens faction. When they returned to the Imperial City the next day at dawn, the whole city was turned upside down by his actions and shocked speechless. Damn, Zonku alone has wiped out so many forces in just a single day and night. He's terrifying. Exactly. The Exploding Heavens faction is a force to be reckoned with. Hey. Who in their right mind would offend the Exploding Heavens faction? Only fools would be so suicidal, running around pretending to be the Exploding Heavens faction. Yeah, the Exploding Heavens faction is so prestigious that every one of them is a sovereign. They are not people who loaves can impersonate. Now that the real Exploding Heavens faction has come out and cleaned up those fake gangsters, we can finally have some peace in the Imperial City. Yes, thanks to the real Exploding Heavens faction, many people applauded them heartily. In less than half a day, however, the situation changed again. Plant them, plant them all. Plant them hard. Leading dozens of cultivators to the many barren hills outside the city, Zuke commanded them to plant all kinds of slogans all across the mountains. The Exploding Heavens faction is invincible. The Exploding Heavens faction is mighty. Zonku of the Exploding Heavens faction was here. Joker of the Exploding Heavens faction was here. If the Exploding Heavens faction goes to war, not a blade of grass will grow. When the Exploding Heavens faction appears, all they leave behind is a thread and a single needle. Dot. Countless slogans flutter in the wind on the mountains like bullet comments on a video. They are quite a sight to behold. They seem to spread toward the Imperial City slowly. All of a sudden, the people in the Imperial City are dumbfounded. What the heck? This dot what kind of atrocity is this? I feel faint to think that after the fake Exploding Heavens faction had finally gone away, the real Exploding Heavens faction stayed and they are just as frustrating. Fool. The fake Exploding Heavens factions were murderous, but the real Exploding Heavens faction is just annoying. You're right. After all, they are just a lustful and mischievous faction, completely different from all those horrors outside. Dot. Eventually, the guards in the Imperial City turned a blind eye to their ways. Zuke's promotion department of the Exploding Heavens faction had inserted slogans everywhere. Meanwhile, Zuke and Buttface had returned to the Imperial City. Just when they had entered an inn to settle down, a palace guard came to see them. It turned out that Madame Ya wanted to see him. Zuke smiled. Madame Ya had most likely wanted to hear some news about Zuke. He waved his hand and replied to the guard, Return and inform Madame Ya that Zuke will be there tonight. Yes, sir. The guard responded quickly and left. Zuke then entered the chamber with Buttface. Buttface immediately occupied the bed and posed seductively, saying, Yours truly is tired. Little K, get me some food. Slam. Zuke threw the hook at him, and it made a muffled sound as it hit Buttface. One hit was all it took to deform the hook utterly. Buttface blanked out for a moment, then immediately rolled on the bed, wailing painfully. I'm hurt. I'm very much injured and am dying. Cut the act and get out of here. Alternatively, I'll make you watch me eat tonight as you go dinnerless. Zuke glared at Buttface. He had long known that Buttface's physical body was invincible. Nothing could hurt him, but he pretended to be injured and wail every single time. Isn't he just asking for a beating then? What? We're eating good stuff tonight. What are we eating? What are we eating? Buttface's eyes lit up upon hearing that there was food, his face was full of excitement. Meat stew. Braised meat too. Zuke responded coolly. Wow, that's good. I like it. By the way, what kind of meat is it? Dog meat. Screw you. Dot. After a few exchanges with Buttface, 
Zuke successfully drove him off the bed. Then he lay down on it and quickly called up the system interface. In the deposit storage, the package that was delivered is lying quietly. System, open the parcel. Zuke's heartbeat quickened. Swish. Several beams of light flashed across the interface of the deposit storage. Ding. A new item mobile SIM card is found. Ding. A new item 200 mutant counterfeit cigarettes is found. Damn. Fake cigarettes? Moreover, they are mutant. Zuke's eyes opened wide with surprise, and he sat up from the bed. He then read the detailed introduction of the two items. Mobile SIM card. Mobile SIM card from Earth. A necessary smart card for your GSM digital cell phone. Mutant counterfeit cigarettes, fake cigarettes from Earth, had become mutant after being polluted by unknown sources on their journey. Effect, mutant counterfeit cigarettes grant you endless power. When the host smokes cigarettes when acting tough, he will be rewarded with double acting tough points. Side effects, smoking is harmful to your health. Dot. Crap. Zuke cursed under his breath after reading the introduction. Don't tell him that these cigarettes were just ordinary counterfeit cigarettes that had mutated on their travels from Earth. Damn, this Yikayu must be a fool. Not only did he buy fake cigarettes, but he also bought 200 of them. With his IQ, it will be difficult for him to inherit my name of the Act Tough King. Zuke shook his head in disappointment. However, he was kind of glad. This fake mutant cigarette was almost too good to be true. With the double reward, the day that he could return to Earth would not be far off. However, the only thing that excited him right now was the SIM card. System, quick, retrieve my cell phone and the SIM card. Oh yeah, and please retrieve the signal boosters too. Zuke called the system and took everything out. He then picked up the SIM card and inserted it into the cell phone. Finally. He set up the four signal boosters. Beep beep. With the crisp sound of the phone booting up, the screen lit up. It was a familiar feeling that Zuke had not experienced for a long time. Buttface, who was next to him, heard the noise and came over immediately. Eyes wide with curiosity, he asked, What's this, boy? Can you eat it? It's so small that it doesn't look very filling. It's called a cell phone. Zuke was in such a good mood that he skipped the usual scolding. He looked at his phone pleasantly as he waited for it to turn on. Buttface's eyes were bright and excited. Cell phone? Zuke laughed, his eyes falling on the screen of his cell phone. At this moment, the phone had successfully and completely booted up. Dot. Chapter 787. Download is completed successfully. The familiar screen, interface and apps were back. Zuke's heart was trembling. He had thought he wouldn't have the chance to go back to Earth and use anything related to Earth. He thought he would have to spend his whole life in this vast world of cultivators. However, the powerful system had established a bridge between this world and Earth for him. This is not easy. This is really not easy. Zuke's heart was full of all kinds of feelings. But when he saw the signal intensity of the cell phone, he almost smashed it because he was so angry. There is no signal. How could this be? Holy crap. This is so annoying. I got this SIM card by fighting through all kinds of hardships and difficulties, but there is no signal. Damn. System, you'd better give me an explanation why these signal boosters are not functioning. Zuke shouted at the system immediately. The system replied calmly. Ding. The system suggests that the host change the position of the signal boosters. Please choose a higher place in an open area or add more signal boosters. More signal boosters. This is impossible. The signal booster was a prop of the system, which was not for sale like the red rope of marriage, and could only be obtained by opening the gift bags. But now Zuke didn't have any more gift bags, so, it was impossible for him to get more signal boosters. Okay. Let me change the position. Zuke regained some hope. He thought about it for a while by rolling his eyes. Then he jumped out of the window with four signal boosters in his hands and dashed toward the rooftop of the hotel directly. Holy crap, little brat. What are you going to do? Wait for me. Buttface also jumped out, following Zuke after seeing his actions. Zuke placed the signal boosters on the rooftop of the hotel. These signal boosters were like antennas, which could be adjusted easily. At the same time, 
he fixed his eyes on the screen of the cell phone. However, there was still no signal for the phone. It was just like a basin of cold water pouring down on his head. Little brat, what are these? Buttface walked up and stepped on one of the signal boosters. My god. Buttface, don't. Zuke shouted immediately. Ding. Before he had finished his sentence, a warning tone came from the cell phone. Zuke was surprised and couldn't believe what he had heard. Is dot this the warning tone of short messages? He turned to the cell phone's screen again. As expected, several short messages from the service provider popped up in the phone to indicate his number had been put into service successfully. Then, he found the no signal message had disappeared. Now the signal was struggling between one bar and two bars. Although the signal was still quite bad, he had managed to receive signals from Earth. Ah ha ha ha, I made it. I made it at last. Fi fi. Right, let me call her now. Zuke was so excited and couldn't wait to call his younger sister. However, when he opened his contact list, he found he didn't have phone numbers for anyone. He even had forgotten his younger sister's phone number. Oh, no. This is really terrible. Zuke was despondent immediately. What's going on? Buttface walked up to him curiously. Then, he tried to comfort Zuke. It's okay, little brat. You will figure it out. Zuke was annoyed and about to punish Buttface. However, when Buttface came over, his cell phone lost its signal instantly. What? Zuke was surprised. Then he said, pointing at Buttface, Buttface, don't come over, step back. What? Buttface was confused. Cut the crap, just go back to the place where you stood just now. Why? I am not your servant. Ouch. Okay, okay, I will step back immediately. Okay. Now remove your foot from that item and come over. Okay, now you go back and step on it again. Damn. As expected, Buttface, you have a signal booster in your body, right? What? Signal booster? I don't know what you are talking about. Buttface shook his head in puzzlement. Zuke said nothing but put Buttface back in his original position. Buttface, don't move. I am going to download something. Zuke said as he activated the 4G network of the cell phone to download applications from the internet. Since I can't contact my friends through my phone, I could contact them through the powerful internet. Zuke remembered that he had registered his WeChat account with his QQ number before he was killed in the car accident. A lot of his classmates and teachers were added to his WeChat, including his younger sister, Zu Fi Fi. Therefore, he planned to download WeChat to contact them. However, the download speed was really pathetic under such a miserable signal intensity. After a long time, the web page had not opened and was still buffering. But Zuke had sufficient patience for this. He stood on the rooftop quietly waiting for the opening of the web page. Buttface became impatient. When he tried to run away, he found he couldn't move. Holy crap, little brat, what did you do to me? Let me go. Buttface shouted immediately, don't move, just stay there to act as the signal booster. Zuke replied, without raising his head. Buttface was shocked. Then he cried, little brat, let me go, you are a pervert. What are you going to do? Zuke ignored his scream and focused his attention on his cell phone. At last, their hard work paid off. The web page was opened. Zuke started to download WeChat immediately. The download was very slow. After a long time, the progress bar had just reached 0.1%. This won't do. I have to spend such a long time downloading WeChat. I can't allow this. Zuke rolled his eyes. The next moment, an idea occurred to him. He activated the system interface immediately. After a short while searching, he managed to find how to make a simple signal booster among a lot of books. Ha ha ha, this is the help from the heavens. Zuke laughed loudly. Then, he started to make a simple signal booster with many cans according to the book. Four hours later, he managed to cut 20 cans and placed all of them on Buttface's head. He ignored Buttface's screams. When he saw the cell phone screen, a faint smile appeared on his face. Download progress. 1.2% 2.2% 2.8% 3.1% When evening fell, a warning tone came from the cell phone. Ding! Zuke let out a sigh of relief and couldn't suppress the wild joy in his heart. Finally, 
the download is completed successfully. Chapter 788 I will surprise you by updating my WeChat moments. That night, the sky above the brilliantly lighted Imperial City was full of stars. People were hurrying back and forth in the city. Cries of traitors could be heard from afar. Zhu Ke stood on the rooftop of the hotel in wild joy. His eyes were fixed on the fluorescent cell phone screen. He had used his QQ account for over 10 years so he could remember his QQ number clearly. He logged on his WeChat account with his QQ account successfully. Then, a dialog box popped up to tell him that he could use the WeChat after binding his cell phone number to the WeChat account. I didn't expect I have to do this in this world. Zhu Ke exclaimed in his heart but still finished the binding operation. Then, he logged on his long-lost WeChat account successfully. Ding, ding, ding. A lot of message tone came in which meant many people left messages to him. Zhu Ke was surprised a bit for these messages were sent to him after his car accident. It was a pity that his life in that world was ended before he had time to read those messages. He would never have imagined he could log on his WeChat account again. He flipped the screen slowly with his finger to check the head portraits, names and those old messages. Tears welled up in his eyes. It's been a long time, my younger sister. Long time no see. My friends, most messages were left by Zhu Fi Fi. Zhu Ke clicked the dialog box to read the messages from the first one. Brother, where are you? Why didn't you answer my call? Brother, I'm okay. Please call me back when you read this message. Don't trust anyone else. Brother, don't scare me. Please contact me. Okay? Please take care. Dot. Zhu Fi Fi sent the next message after two months. Brother. Please be assured that I will revenge for you. I would never let them go. I am going to make that woman pay for this. Dot. Sorry, brother, I failed. I wronged that woman who saved my life just now. But I won't give up. I will make them pay dearly sooner or later. Brother, it's time for me to go. When I come back, I will make them pay. From here. There was no more messages from Zhu Fi Fi. Zhu Ke was depressed by this message which was sent in the third year after his car accident. But now his cell phone couldn't tell him the current time of the Earth. The cell phone didn't update its time because of the network slowdown or relocation failure. Zhu Ke was quite nervous and worried something bad might have happened to his younger sister. Click click. Then, he started to send message to Zhu Fi Fi by tapping the screen rapidly. Fi Fi. I am still alive. Don't revenge for me. I will go back to you. Just wait for me. However, this message was always in the status of sending. Zhu Ke knew it was caused by the poor network connection, so he started to check messages sent by other people. Most of those messages were sent by his high school classmates or roommates in university. But he didn't find any message from his beautiful ex-girlfriend. When I go back, I will punish all those who used to set me up including you. Zhu Ke's squinted eyes were full of killing intent. Botface, who was standing beside Zhu Ke, was terrified. Holy shit, little brat, what are you going to do? You look so ferocious now. Are you going to kill me? Please don't do that, Brother Ke. I was wrong. Just don't kill me. I am an ancient mythical beast. You can't kill me. Okay, okay, I won't kill you. Stop your scream. Zhu Ke replied embarrassedly, Really? Buttface was stunned. Then, he let out a sigh of relief and said with a smile, I know that. How dare you kill a mighty ancient beast like me? It will only be a joke. Ouch. Damn, you attacked me sneakily again. Zhu Ke rolled his eyes and didn't want to waste his time on Buttface. At this time, he got a failed to send for the message to Zhu Fi Fi in the cell phone. It was caused by the poor network connection. Zhu Ke had to press the resend. When the sun rose in the morning, Zhu Ke jumped up on the rooftop suddenly and shouted, Yes, nice. He had resent that message for the whole night, and it was sent successfully at last. Zhu Ke was so excited that his eyes were lit up and smile appeared in his face. It is the time to let everyone know I am back. He lowered his head to prepare a message, which he would send it to all members in his WeChat contact list. When he was about to press the button, he stopped. It seems that it is inappropriate to send this to all of them. After all, I am a dead person for them. If I send this message to them, some of them might be frightened to death.
He touched his jaw as he considered this. Soon, an idea occurred to him as he fixed his eyes on the WeChat moments. Yes, smile appeared on Zhu Ke's face immediately. Then, he purchased a human-skinned mask from the system and designed it according to his appearance on the Earth. After that, he put the mask on his face directly. But face. Let's take a picture together. He switched on the cell phone's front camera fluently as he stood beside Buttface. Then, he raised the cell phone at an angle of 45 degree. What? What are you doing? Take a what? Buttface was confused. However, when he saw his face in the screen of the cell phone which was held in Zhu Kei's hand, he was shocked immediately. Snap. Almost at the same time. Zhu Kei pressed the shutter. The classic group photo of Zhu Kei and a dog was taken in this way. In the photo, Zhu Kei was wearing an ancient long gown. His long hair was bound in a knot. Shiny smile appeared in his handsome face. Beside him, there was a husky-like dog who was greatly shocked. Behind them, an imperial city in the morning light could be seen. A man and a dog coexisted harmoniously in the photo. Holy shit, little brat. You are awesome. This is definitely a miraculous artifact. Come on, give it to me and I want to bite it. Buttface was so surprised and his eyes were full of excitement. If he were not confined by Zhu Kei, he would have rushed towards Zhu Kei crazily at this moment. Zhu Kei ignored Buttface directly. He opened his WeChat moments and chose the picture he had just taken. Then, he added some words to it, at the very beginning. There are only one person and one dog. You have to rob all your gears in this game. Hey hey, let me surprise all of you by updating my WeChat moments. Zhu Kei smiled as he pressed the send button expectantly. After that, he sat down on the rooftop and started his waiting. Network traffic for sharing a picture in WeChat moments was definitely more. But now Zhu Kei had abundant time and patience. He tried to see the surprised reaction of his friends after receiving his update. He was also looking forward to the reply of Zhu Fai Fai. Come on, Zhu Kei shouted in his heart eagerly. Dot. Chapter 789 We have seen a ghost. One day passed. Zhu Kei still sat on the rooftop of the hotel, his eyes fixed on the cell phone screen. He hadn't gotten any reply from Zhu Fai Fai and his update of the WeChat moments was still sending. Soon, evening fell again. Zhu Kei tried to send messages to other friends during this period, but all his efforts were in vain. This crappy connection speed is sheer torture. Zhu Kei was becoming impatient. His patience could only last for one day and one night. Fine, but face. I have an important task for you. You should continue to stay here to act as the signal booster. I will be back soon. Zhu Kei said as he put the cell phone beside Buttface and was about to leave. After all, he should have gone to meet Madame last night. Now, one whole day had passed. If he didn't go to see her, Madame would worry about him. Therefore, he should at least show up to let people in the Imperial Palace know that he was okay so they could feel relieved. Seeing that Zhu Kei was preparing to leave, Buttface shouted angrily, Screw you, little brat. Don't go. Let me go, or I will crush your stupid cell phone underfoot later. What? Right. Thanks for reminding me. Zhu Kei stopped abruptly and used several magic arts with a smile. Whoosh, 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 along with a dazzling light display. The restriction magic art on Buttface's body was strengthened dozens of times. Damn. Buttface's eyes widened in embarrassment. At the same time, Zhu Kei took out a spiritual level spell and set it up on the rooftop to prevent anyone from approaching. After finishing all of this, Zhu Kei left confidently. He cancelled his disguise and dashed toward the Imperial Palace, leaving Buttface howling on the rooftop alone. Crap, 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 howl, little brat, don't go, let me go, you are a beast, woof, howl, growl, dot. However, it was quite coincidental that his update of the WeChat moments was sent successfully just as he turned around and was about to leave. It was more coincidental that it was a special day on earth. For numerous people, it was just an ordinary day. But for Zuke's friends. That day was Zhu Kei's death anniversary. After his death in a car accident, his friends planned to make arrangements for his funeral by pooling money together. 
but their plan was refused by his younger sister. She managed to scrape together a large sum of money and organized a decent funeral for him. His tomb was located in the graveyard. Now, this day was his death anniversary again. Only three young people in suits appeared in front of Zuke's tomb. Six years passed in a blink of an eye. Right. It's been three years since our graduation from college. Alas, this is his sixth death anniversary. I didn't expect that only the three of us would come for his memorial. It's okay. Now that all of us have to work, it is quite normal for us to be busy. Lee Rowland is really ruthless. She used to be his girlfriend and she has never come here. Humphrey, if she hadn't broken up with him, he wouldn't have been killed in the accident. When one of them said this, all of them went silent. Apparently, these young men were Zhu Ke's roommates in college, Zhang Derong, Suzy Olian, and Wang Jin. Do you really think it was an accident? I don't believe it. Suzy Olian shook his head and said seriously. Wang Jin sighed. So what, could you find any evidence? Six years have passed. We should let it go. What about Fi Fi? In order to avenge her elder brother, she dropped out of the university and went abroad alone. Till now, we haven't heard from her at all. The world is so big. It is extremely difficult to find her. I just hope she's safe, otherwise, think how guilty we'll feel in front of him in the future. After saying all that. The three of them went silent again. Ding. A warning tone came from Suzy Oliang's cell phone at this time. Alas, I guess it's something related to company business again. He sighed languidly as he took out his cell phone and clicked on the icon of WeChat. However, it was a message sent by his girlfriend, who asked him to hit the like button for her WeChat moments update, so that she could get some rewards. Suzy Olian couldn't help but smile embarrassedly. He shook his head and clicked his WeChat moments. The next moment, Suzy Olian was stunned on the spot. Then, his expression changed and his pupils contracted dramatically. How dot could this be? Look dot look at. He was so nervous that he even started to stumble over words as he shouted at his friends in great shock. Zhang Derong and Wang Jin were shocked by his reaction. Then, they said embarrassedly. It seems you've seen a ghost. What did you see? He turned and passed his phone, and they fixed their eyes on Suzy Oliang's cell phone. The next moment, the two of them were also stunned. Holy crap. Why dot why do this man and Zuke look so alike? No, this one is more handsome. I guess he used the read uch function. Why did this guy have a group photo with a husky by wearing the ancient costume? Is he an actor of a costume drama? This is so weird that he looks really like Zuke. The two of them were quite surprised by the picture shown on the cell phone screen. Suzy Olian couldn't help but shout loudly, Are you stupid? Look who sent this WeChat moments update. The next moment, Zhang Derong and Wang Jin's expressions were frozen instantly. Holy crap. This is Zhu Ke's WeChat account. My god. We have seen a ghost. Dot. At the same time, in the void which was extremely far away from Earth, in the Fire Nation's Imperial Palace in the Five Elements Mountain of the World of Cultivators, Zhu Ke had cancelled the disguise effect. Now he was dashing toward the Imperial Palace quietly in the night. He had reached the void training stage. Nobody could sense his movement when he entered the Imperial Palace. Also, he had set up the spells in the palace. Therefore, it was quite easy for him to enter the palace, almost as if he entered his own house. On the rooftop of the palace, Zhu Ke released his soul's strength. After a short while, he sensed several familiar auras. He could sense Madame Ya, Su Ling'er, Su Zhao Qi, and Su Yanlin, the sect leader of the Great Change sect who had also moved into the Imperial Palace of the Fire Nation. Gasp, I'm afraid one bed is not big enough for the five of us. Zhu Ke murmured in a low voice as a shameless image appeared in his mind. Then, he jumped down and walked toward the bedchamber of Madame Ya, which was closest to him. At this time, Madame Ya was lying gracefully on her side in her bed, reading a book. However, after a short while, she put down the book as if she had lost interest in it. Then, she fixed her eyes on the starry sky outside the window. A moment later, she sighed in a low voice, I've been missing you day and night, but you are always not here. I've read your poems for several years. Zhu Ke, when will you come back to me? Thump, thump. At this time, 
some footsteps could be heard outside the door. After that, an imperial guard shouted from outside, resting one knee on the floor, Madam, Yang Hianyan of the Exploding Heavens faction begs for an audience. Oh, it's Lord Yang, just ask him to come in. Madam Ye put on her clothes and robe and stepped toward the door of her bedchamber. After a short while, the imperial guard came in with a young man. The young man was quite nervous and kept looking around vigilantly. Madam Ye asked immediately, Lord Yang, have you got any news about Zhu Kei? The young man replied hurriedly, Madam Ye, bad news. I've got a message from our exploding heavens faction just now. Zhu Kei was ambushed on his way here and nobody knows whether he is dead or alive. He asked someone to send a message, which said he wants to see you. What? Madame Ye turned pale after hearing that. Her mind went blank immediately. The young man said anxiously, Madame Ye, time is pressing. Please come with me immediately to save Zhu Kei, otherwise, he might be endangered. Okay, let's go. Madame Ye was very anxious and about to agree. Before she finished her words, she felt something was wrong. Almost at the same time, a sneer came from outside the bedchamber. Hey, I heard someone said I was ambushed and nobody knows whether I am dead or alive. Come on, tell me why nobody knows whether I am dead or alive. Dot. Chapter 790 Has the signal been boosted? This voice. Madame Ye was stunned a bit, then she shouted delightedly. Zhu Kei, the young man Yang Kai An Yun was stunned his face full of terror. Zhu Kei is back. Whoosh. A figure jumped down from above and appeared at the entrance of the bedchamber. Chilly light gushed from his black eyes. An iconic wicked smile appeared on his lips. It was Zhu Kei. It seems the anti-fraud campaign should be continued. I didn't expect a lucky fish that escaped the net would be found in the palace. Zhu Kei sneered. Glancing at Yang Kianyun sarcastically, his words made Yang Kianyun tremble. He almost fell on the ground. Everyone knew Zhu Kei's bad reputation as a big devil. His disappearance for all these years had emboldened a lot of people. However, all their boldness disappeared immediately along with Zhu Kei's reappearance. Flop. Yang Kianyun kneeled down and begged, My fellow cultivator. Zhu. Please spare my life. I dot I know I was wrong. Royal Highness Wang asked me to do this, and I can't defy his order. What? It is the Royal Highness Wang again. Zhu Kei said with a faint smile. Madame Ye was also surprised by Yang Kianyun's reply. What did you say? What did Royal Highness Wang ask you to do? Apparently, she knew nothing about this at all. Maybe she also didn't know a lot of people had posed as members of the Exploding Heavens faction outside the Imperial Palace. Yang Kianyun didn't dare to conceal anything at this moment. Zhu Kei was far more horrible than Royal Highness Wang, he replied, still kneeling on the ground. Madame Ye. Royal Highness Wang ordered us to pose as sovereigns of the Exploding Heavens faction. All of this was planned by him. Please spare my life, Madame Ye. He asked you to pose as sovereigns of the Exploding Heavens faction? Madame Ye was shocked. Then, her face darkened and she asked coldly, Why dot did he do that? Yang Kianyun trembled a bit and started to him and ha as if he didn't dare to reveal the truth. Zhu Kei touched his nose and said with a faint smile, Interesting. Nowadays people are not afraid of death. Yang Kianyun changed his expression instantly and shouted in a hurry. Royal Highness Wang is planning treason. He asked me to fool Madame Ye so that he could kidnap Madame Ye as a hostage. In this way, he could protect himself from being, dot from being punished by me, right? Zhu Kei asked with a smile. Bang. Yang Kianyun kowtowed to Zhu Kei immediately, which meant that what Zhu Kei said was right. Then, he started to beg for mercy from Zhu Kei and Madame Ye again. Zhu Kei said nothing. He pointed his finger at Yang Kianyun slightly. Then, a strand of light gushed from his finger. Bang! Along with a dull sound, Yang Kianyun's forehead was penetrated by the light, which killed him instantly. Madame Ye was scared by this scene, but she said nothing, for she would always support Zhu Kei no matter what he did. Moreover, Yang Kianyun had crossed a line. Even if he was asked to do this by Royal Highness Wang, his guilt was still unforgivable. If Zhu Kei hadn't come back this time, Madame Ye might have really been kidnapped by Royal Highness Wang. At the thought of this, 
Madame Ya said seriously as she looked at the Imperial Guard. Clean this place out. Send people to arrest Royal Highness Swang immediately. If he resists arrest, you can carry out a death sentence on the spot. Yes, madam. The Imperial Guard replied and left in a hurry. At this time, Madame Ya looked at Zhu Ke apologetically as she said, lowering her head. I was too careless. Creek. Zuke closed the door and said with a faint smile, Since you have made a mistake, you should accept my punishment. After saying that, he picked Madame Ya up and dashed toward her bed. Ah, my lord, wait, ah, dot. That night, Zuke spent the whole night making love with Madame Ya. His extraordinary performance totally conquered Madame Ya. In the morning, Madame Ya lay in Zuke's arms and said feebly, My lord. You dot you. Don't talk, have a good rest, or I will continue to punish you tonight. Zuke said with an energetic smile, holding Madame Ya in his arms delightedly. Madame Ya blinked her eyes and said with a blush, Then dot I will be waiting for you here. Zuke was surprised. Gasp. This woman is really horny. If I am not the powerful act tough saint, I will be drained by her. Luckily, thanks to the automatic recovery function. I can always be energetic. Dot. After lying in bed for a while, Madame Ya dropped into a deep sleep. Zuke got out of bed and looked out the window. He discovered it was already morning. Holy shit. I should go back and check the cell phone. He didn't have any more time to think. He took out a piece of paper and left a message for Madame Ya. He asked her to tell Su Younglin and others that he was back. Then, he dashed out of the Imperial Palace. In a short while. Zuke returned to the rooftop of the hotel, but face was still frozen there. He had even fallen asleep while he was standing, which impressed Zuke a lot. Zuke went through his spell quietly. Even Buttface didn't sense his return. Zuke didn't want to wake Buttface up. He picked up the cell phone. The next moment, he was stunned by what he saw. His face was full of wild joy, because he saw unread messages from the icon of WeChat system. Recharge my cell phone now. Zuke summoned the system as he clicked WeChat on the screen of the cell phone. The next moment, he was disappointed after seeing the sender of those unread messages. All those messages were sent by one person, but this person was not Zu Fi Fi, and he also got no comments in his WeChat moments. Damn, what's going on? Could it be that people on Earth have stopped using WeChat? Zuke murmured disappointedly with furrowed eyebrows. After that, he turned to the sender of the messages. He found the name of the sender was Lao Kai, whose head portrait was a cute bear. Lao Kai, who is this guy? Zuke was puzzled. Then, he clicked the dialogue box. Holy crap, Zuke, I haven't seen you for years. You are so handsome now. Are you shooting a film? I am Lao Kai. I sat in front of you when we were in junior middle school. My name was Kai Tengjin. Do you remember me? I saw the update of your WeChat moments. I don't know why I can't comment on it. Maybe because I am on a mountain. Now I am a director. Where did you take the picture you shared in your WeChat moments? That ancient city is marvelous. Tell me. I want to use it for my next film. This is my new number, 136, please call me back. Zuke was dumbfounded by these messages. Soon, he remembered something. Indeed, that guy was his good friend when they were in junior middle school. However, he went abroad for his high school education. They had been out of touch since then. After that. They had met by chance when they were in college. They recognized each other and friended each other on WeChat. But they had had little contact since then. I didn't expect that he would become a director. Zuke murmured in a low voice with a smile. After that, he sent a silly message to reply. What a coincidence. I am shooting a film too. The ancient city is a special effect made by myself. Isn't it awesome? However, he never expected that this message would be sent instantly. Zuke was surprised. Could it be that the signal has been boosted? How could I send a message instantly? Dot. Chapter 791 A Former Classmate Zuke was excited. He started to send a message to Zu Fi Fi immediately. Fi Fi, it's me. I am really your elder brother. I didn't die. But this time the message was not sent successfully. Like the night before. The message was always in the status of sending. Damn, are you kidding me? You failed to send the important message, but could send the unimportant message instantly.
Zuke cursed and almost crushed the cell phone because of anger. Ding, the warning tone of an incoming message came just at this time. Zuke turned back to the screen and found it was a message from Kai Tengjin. Holy crap, it is a special effect. Really? This dot is not scientific. Your special effect is so vivid. I guess even Hollywood couldn't do that. After reading this message, Zuke couldn't help but laugh to himself. What he had said was nonsense. How could special effects be more vivid than the real objects? Ding. At this time, Kai Tengjin sent another message. Former classmate, just cut it out. Tell me where you are. I am shooting a film on the top of a mountain. The signal here is quite poor. I can only contact you through the satellite phone channel of a big shot. What? A personal satellite phone channel? Zuke was stunned. Could it be that I can receive Kai Tengjin's message instantly because of the connection to a satellite telephone channel? To prove his idea. Zuke started to send a lot of messages to other friends. Then, he sent a message to reply to Kai Tengjin. As expected, all the messages sent to others failed. The only one that went through was the one to Kai Tengjin, which was sent instantly. Zuke was not disappointed. On the contrary, he was quite happy. He shouted excitedly, Holy crap! Finally! I have found a way to contact my friends and family. He clicked the number sent by Kai Tengjin and started to make a phone call, anxiously waiting. If he could get through, it would be awesome, for then he could contact anyone on Earth who had a satellite phone channel. Although he didn't understand the principle of this technology, he thought it worth a try after all. Toot dot toot. Soon, he heard the waiting tone which meant he had gotten through successfully. The phone was picked up at last. Hello? Hearing the voice come out of the cell phone, Zuke shouted excitedly, Lao Kai. Holy crap, Lao Kai. Damn, I made it finally. A, you are dot Zuke? Kai Tengjin sounded uncertain, as he was shocked by Zuke's reaction. Zuke shouted excitedly, Yes, it's me, Lao Kai. My awesome Kai. Holy crap, finally. You called me back. Are you shooting a costume drama? Those clothes you're wearing are so old-fashioned. Come on, tell me where you are. I will make a serial drama for you. Your handsome face will definitely make you famous. Kai Tengjin replied. Zuke ignored his words and said directly, Lao K, do you remember my younger sister, Zhu Fai Fai? I lost touch with her. Please help me find her, for her life might be endangered. Lao Kai replied, Fi Fi. Of course, I remember her. But I haven't contacted her for a long time. Why did you lose touch with her? Zuke said, This is not important. The point is we should find her as soon as possible for I am worried about her safety. Lao Kai said, Okay, how long has it been since you lost touch with her? Zuke was choked by this question. A. What is the current year? Lao Kai was stunned by Zuke's question. Then he replied embarrassedly. My god, are you kidding me? The year is 2023. 2023? Zuke replied, counting on his fingers. That's right, I've lost touch with her for six years. His words made Lao Kai pause. You've lost touch with your younger sister for six years. Why do you want to find her now in such a hurry? Lao Kai was totally confused and even thought Zuke had lost his mind. Zuke replied. Right. That is a long and complicated story. I am only able to contact you now. Please help me find her. What? You can only contact me? Lao Kai said in surprise. It is quite weird. The signal is quite poor here. All cell phones of my crew are not functional, but I can only call you. Don't worry. The shooting here will be finished in a few days. I will definitely help you to find her after going home. Okay. Thank you. This is really important. Please don't forget it. When I return, I will repay your kindness. Zuke replied. That won't be necessary. Just tell me the address of the place where you took that picture. My god, that is really a special effect. Zuke said embarrassedly. Special dot effect? Okay, okay, it is a special effect. If you have time, you can record a video for me, so that I can have a good look at your dot special effect. Apparently. Lao Kai didn't believe what Zuke said, but he still replied as if he did because he really wanted to see that ancient city. Zuke replied with a smile, Okay, no problem, but you should remember the place you made this call in the satellite phone channel you are using, 
or you will lose touch with me. What the heck, you? Toot 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 toot. All of a sudden, a busy tone came out of Zuke's cell phone before Lao Kai finished his words. Damn, it's really disconnected. Zuke said disappointedly, as what he was worried about had really happened. He pressed the redial button immediately. Then a lady's voice came from the cell phone. Sorry, your telephone service is suspended. Please pay your telephone bill on time. Damn, I've got no credit left. Zhu Kei's eyes opened wide. He never expected that his plans could be screwed up because he forgot to pay the telephone bill. Ding. After hanging up the phone, he got a short message. He was dumbfounded by the content of it. Dear user, up to July 21, 2023. The amount you owe on your telephone bill has reached 26,705 yuan. To avoid affecting your usage, please pay your telephone bill on time. Thanks for your cooperation. I owe dot over 26,000 yuan. Damn, this service provider is really a profiteer. Zuke was totally annoyed. Dot. At the same time, on Earth, a film crew was busy working on a remote mountain. Hearing the busy tone from his cell phone, Lao Kai couldn't help but frown, damn, how dare he hang up on my call. After saying that, he called Zhu Ke back, but was stunned. The service provider told him the service of the number he had called had been suspended. Shit, this guy has used up his credit. We were talking about business. How could he use up his credit? Lao Kai shook his head embarrassedly. At this time, one crew member shouted in surprise, ha ha. I can make a phone call with my phone. After that, the rest of the people also started to shout one after another. What? I can also get through. Ha ha, me too. I can also get access to the internet with my phone. The connection speed is quite good. Finally, the service has resumed. Dot. Lao Kai's eyes lit up and he shouted to a crew member who was not far away, Zhao Ming. Recharge 100 you onto this number. I have something urgent to discuss with him. He used up his credit when we were talking. Okay, director. Zhao Ming replied as he started to recharge with his cell phone. After a short while, he finished. Director, it's done. Thank you. Lao Kai took out a 100 yuan bill and handed it to Zhao Ming. Zhao Ming waved his hand and said, Director. This is not necessary. It is just 100 yuan. Lao Kai repeated, just take it. Zhao Ming replied, Director, please don't look down on me. I have been working for you for a long time. I will never take your money after paying a telephone bill for you. Whatever. Lao Kai didn't want to waste his time on Zhao Ming. He picked up his phone to call Zhu Kei again. Then he was told the service for Zhu Kei's number was still suspended. Holy crap. Still suspended. Zhao Ming, was your recharge successful? Ah, uh, it said my operation was finished successfully. Forget it. Recharge another 100 yuan for this number. Okay, done. Well. Let me try. Damn, I still can't get through. How much does this guy owe his service provider? Don't worry, director, I will recharge 1000 yuan for him. Hell, no, he should pay his own telephone bill. Hey hey, director, I have finished the recharging. Now you can make your phone call. You. Lao Kai shook his head and dialed Zhu Kei's number again. The next moment. Lao Kai was dumbfounded again. What he heard from his cell phone was still the service of the subscriber you dialed has been suspended. Crap. Lao Kai cursed on the spot. Zhao Ming was also surprised. Director, what happened? You still can't get through? Could it be that the payment is delayed? Lao Kai couldn't hold his temper anymore. He waved his hand and shouted, Damn. Zhao Ming, recharge 10,000 yuan for his number. If I still can't get through. I will swallow excrement during a live show. Dot. Chapter 792, 10,000 years from now. Ah. Uh. Zhao Ming was shocked. $10,000? This is lots of money. Who would top up $10,000 to his mobile? Lao Kai, calm yourself down. He hurriedly said. Lao Kai stared back at him. Shut up. Are you telling me that you don't believe I can pay the $10,000 back? No. No. No, Lao Kei, I know you have made a huge amount of money by shooting films in the last few years. I will top it up now. Zhao Ming forced a smile and picked up the phone and topped it up. Hearing this, Lao Kai picked the phone up proudly and called Zhu Kei. Sorry, 
The number you dialed does not exist, please check it and dial later, crap. Lao Kai yelled and his voice echoed in the mountains. Zhao Ming was greatly surprised. What's going on? Why is Zhu Kei's phone bill still past due? Crap, Zhao Ming, top it up. Hello, where are you going? Lao Kai could no longer suppress his anger and shouted aloud. He was about to top it up with more money and was infuriated when he saw Zhao Ming running away. Zhao Ming stopped and turned around. I am going to fetch some crap for you. You said if you fail to reach Zhu Kei via mobile. Come back, you little creep. Top up $100,000 to Zhu Kei's phone. If I fail again, I will eat a double amount of crap. Lao Kai shouted. Zhao Ming forced out a smile and topped up $100,000, which he had saved for a few years, to Zhu Kei's phone. He was not worried that Lao Kai would not pay him back, since he knew that Lao Kai had a good reputation as a film producer and had received many praises from his colleagues. Later, Lao Kai called Zhu Kei again. Sorry, the subscriber you dialed cannot be connected for the moment. Please redial later. Hearing this, Lao Kai was so angry that he almost passed out. Screw you, Zhu Kei, you still can't reach him? Zhao Ming was stunned and could not believe Zhu Kei's phone bill was so huge. Lao Kai waved his hand and said, I still can't reach him. Never mind, bring me some alcohol, I need to calm myself down. At the same time, in the cultivation world, Zhu Kei had already put aside his signal booster and let Buttface relax. Since his phone had already run out of credit, Zhu Kei had given up and was trying to figure out other possible ways. Well, it depends on whether Lao Kai would top up my phone or not. He needs me to shoot scenes for his films. When he can't reach me via the phone, he would have to top up my phone. Zhu Kei shook his head and cleared all the arrays on the roof of the inn. Soon, Buttface woke up and immediately got very angry. Screw you, I want to kill you, man to man. He glared at Zhu Kei and shouted. Zhu Kei smiled and nodded. Sure, come with me. Wait a minute. Buttface stepped backward, a bit surprised by Zhu Kei's reaction. He pretended to be proud and said, I have been restricted by you for two whole days, and I am not feeling very well. How about another day? But before that... You would have to cook me some stinky tofu, so I can recover soon. It's on me, you can eat whatever you want. Let's go back to the palace. Zhu Kei smiled and headed to the palace. After all, if it were not for Buttface, I could not possibly make contact with people on Earth. Maybe next time, I will still need him as the signal booster, so I need to treat him well. Seeing Zhu Kei in such a good mood, Buttface became alert and asked, you're plotting something, right? You know what, I already know your dirty schemes, I refuse to eat anything tonight. Oh, really? Zhu Kei stopped and smiled at Buttface. If I have a bite tonight, I am a dog. Buttface said proudly, while patting his chest. Good. Dot. At the same time, the palace finally reclaimed its peace. After Zhu Kei killed Yang Kai and Yun, Madame Ye arrested His Royal Highness and scared people who supported His Royal Highness. Those people tried to run away at night, but they were caught by guards. Maybe it was because Madame Ye had been staying with Zhu Kei for quite a while, but she had also become a bit ruthless. After she caught those people, she killed all of them. On his way back to the palace, Zhu Kei took out his phone. I am a bit bored. Why not shoot some short videos and send them back to Lao Kai? I am sure he will be surprised. Zhu Kei laughed. When Zhu Kei came to the Imperial Palace of the Fire Nation, he was also shocked by its grandeur, since he had never seen such a place back on Earth. He then took out a few more advanced mobiles phones, which were as good as the best cameras six years ago and controlled them with his soul's strength. With the phones floating in the air, he began to shoot all the way back to the palace. When he arrived at the entrance door of the palace, all the guards turned to him and said respectfully, General Zhu, welcome back. Zhu Kei walked past them with an indifferent and proud face. The cameras recorded everything. When he stepped into the rear rooms, Su Yunlin, Su Ling'er, Su Zhaoqi, and Madame Yu were already waiting for him. As soon as they saw Zhu Kei, they all became very happy and called Zhu Kei's name altogether. Zhu Kei. They all then looked at each other, 
Feeling a bit awkward, Madame Ye gently bit her lips and looked at Zhu Ke with deep affection. Su Ling'er and Su Zhao Qi's beautiful faces blushed. They were all very smart and knew clearly they all loved Zhu Ke. In the cultivation world, a man can marry as many women as he wants, which was quite common. A wonderful young man being chased after by many women was also a common thing. Besides, they all had spent a long time with Zhu Ke and knew Zhu Ke was sincere so they did mind sharing Zuke with others. You are finally back. I have eaten up all the chocolate pills you gave me, give me more. Su Zhao Qi ran forward and reached out her hand, asking for more chocolate pills. Zuke laughed. It's been a few years since I saw her last time. She has already grown up and become very tall and beautiful. He shook his head and said, Young lady, you should at least call me brother Zuke. Do you think I will give you chocolate pills now? I don't care. I want more chocolate pills, and you have to give them to me. Su Zhao Qi pouted. Buttface also pouted, looking very ugly, and reached out his hands to Zhu Ke. I also want some chocolate pills so I can recover quicker. Screw you. You just said you would not eat anything tonight. Zhu Ke glared at him. Buttface got furious. I said I refuse to eat anything tonight. Not now. Besides, I am not a foodie. I just want to have some chocolate pills, so I can recover quicker. Then you can screw off now. The chocolate pills can't help you. By the way, dogs can eat chocolate. I am a wolf. Zuke began to quarrel with Buttface. Seeing this, the women all laughed. It had been five years. Zuke was still like a child, but at the same time, he was also able to protect them and make them feel safe. Yes. Zuke realized the camera floating in the air was still shooting videos and came up with an idea. I am sure that the scenery in the palace has already surprised Lao Kai quite a lot. If I took a few video clips of Su Yunlin and others, Lao Kai would definitely be stricken with surprise. Yes, I am going to shoot a brilliant movie myself. Then I will ask Lao Kai to air it, maybe Fi Fi will have a chance to watch it. Thinking of this. Zuke's eyes were full of excitement. I am going to make a movie about Xianxia, and it will definitely shake the earth. Kaiuya, Yunlan, and Linger, I have got an audacious idea. Zuke said to Madame Ya and the others, What sort of idea? I am going to shoot films and sail into the world of films. Ten thousand years from now, people will still remember my name Zhu Yan Zhu. Dot. Chapter 793 Zhu Ke is about to shoot a film. Madame Ya and everyone else were confused about what Zhu Ke had said. They had no idea about the world of film and actors, etc. Regardless, Zhu Ke started to make preparations to begin shooting the film. And that night, shooting began. A magnificent banquet was held right outside the palace. The stars were shining brightly in the sky and, on the square outside the palace, there were countless large tables that had been set up, magnificently appointed with silver and gold and flowers. Countless officials and generals were swarming around. Zhu Ke, in white, was standing in front of two coal stoves, with a kitchen knife in one hand and a kitchen scraper in the other. Everyone was staring at him, and the floating camera that had Ultra HD pixels was shooting at the same time. Ha, ha, ha. A piercing laugh echoed in the air. The next moment, Buttface appeared, with a red carpet on his back and a white diaper. He stood proudly, with the moonlight shining upon his head. Buttface pointed at Zhu Ke and shouted, God of cookery of the exploding heavens faction, today either you or I will be the winner. Hearing this, all the people present were confused. Zhu Ke laughed and answered, Fine. How do you want to have this contest? Then, my cooking skill is the best in this world, and the stinky tofu I make has received a great reputation across the world. If you can beat me with whatever you are going to cook today, I will admire you forever. Buttface said, Very good, I see. Zuke replied and walked to the coal stove. Buttface also changed into a black figure and quickly moved forward. Bang! Each of them made an ancient Chinese blast furnace and put it right on top of the coal stove. Seeing this, no one had any idea what was going to happen. My, my, what is going on? They told us that there was a banquet tonight. Why did they take out an ancient Chinese blast furnace? By the way, 
who has better cooking skills, who is going to win, and what does it have to do with an ancient Chinese blast furnace? Dot. Madame Ya and all the rest of the guests were smiling at Zhu Kei, and they all looked very curious. I really have no idea what he is doing, but it's all very funny. Su Linger said gently. Su Young Lin nodded. Today he said he was going to shoot a film or something, and we had done some rehearsals earlier. He also said he is about to become a superstar. Gosh, I really don't know what he is thinking. But it is exactly because of his being mysterious that he enchants us, right? What do you think? Madame Ya gently blinked her eyes and smiled. Hearing this, Su Linger and Su Young Lin blushed. The three of them had been living in the Imperial Palace all these years, and they all knew they loved Zhu Kei very deeply, but they just never spoke about it openly. That was why Madame Ya's words gave them quite a shock. Luckily, Zhu Kei was busy shooting his film with Buttface. If he had ever seen or heard this scene, he would have gone around boasting and saying he wanted a big bed that was fit for four people. Bang! Zhu Kei waved his hand, and, in the blink of an eye, a huge wave of fire erupted from his palm and changed into an enormous dragon. The dragon flew straight up into the sky and circled around and suddenly dashed into the coal stove that was on Zhu Kei's side. Bang! At the same time, Buttface also waved his paws and activated a fire dragon talisman. All of a sudden, a blue fire dragon appeared and lighted the coal stove. The scene was really dazzling, but all the people present were cultivators, and they knew the tricks very well. There is really no need to make such a show of it. What is the point of using a fire dragon talisman when they can easily light the coal stove by using their fire true core strength? At the same time, Zhu Kei hit the coal stove heavily. Bang! The lid of the stove jumped up and opened. Zhu Kei began to quickly move his hands, cutting up all the different raw foods and putting them into the stove. Looking from far away, people felt like Zhu Kei had countless hands, and they were all greatly shocked by Zhu Kei. What on earth is he trying to do? He used 13 sword incantations and knife incantations. My goodness, I knew it. People of the Exploding Heavens faction are not ordinary. People exclaimed. Buttface shouted aloud suddenly and took out a bag of stinky tofu and poured it into the ancient Chinese blast furnace. Then he took out a pair of long chopsticks and began to stir it. It looked like the two were not competing with each other to see who had better cooking skills, but that they were doing acrobatics. After a short while, Zhu Kei waved his hand and a huge amount of true core strength erupted from his hand. Bang! The entire sky was covered by his true core strength, and the dark sky became all lit up. The true core strength changed into nine roaring dragons. Down! Zhu Kei shouted and reached his hands forward with great strength. The nine dragons immediately fell into the ancient Chinese blast furnace from the sky. Bang! The ancient Chinese blast furnace exploded and the dish inside began to shine. It was too bright, so people had to close their eyes a bit, even though they were trying their best to see the dish. When they saw the dish, they were all shocked and no one made any sound. At the same time, Zhu Kei's phone took a photo of that shining dish. It was steamed minced pork. Each slice of meat was as thin as a cicada's wings. The meat slices curled up like a dragon and were covered with white shining dots. Each slice of meat looked like a dragon scale. All the people present were completely stunned. Even the most knowledgeable cultivator among all these people had never seen such a delicate dish. Seeing this, Buttface was also terribly surprised and his facial expression became really exaggerated. This is impossible. What is this dish? Zhu Kei replied seriously, Ao Jai Ushan, the Ultra Dragon of the Exploding Heavens Faction. What an Ao Jai Ushan, the Ultra Dragon of the Exploding Heavens Faction. I have to admit that you have the better cooking skills. Buttface murmured and spit out some blood, looking very upset and sad. He walked back to the coal stove, took out all the stinky tofu and made a bow to Zhu Kei. Indeed, the food deity of the Exploding Heavens faction is really worthy of his title. I shall say goodbye. Then he jumped into the sky and disappeared. I am sorry to tell you all that I am not in the mood for cooking any more dishes today. You shall all leave. Zhu Kei said, 
with his hands behind his back. He slowly walked up into the sky and disappeared. The floating phone also finished shooting and left with Zhu Ke. Everyone present was shocked, and they looked at each other in surprise, without knowing what had just happened. After a while, people could hear butt faces screaming in the air, I have done everything you asked me to do, and I think I have given a good performance, what do you want? Buttface was running, with a pot of stinky tofu in his hands, and Zhu Ke was chasing after him. Screw you. You call that a good performance? You forgot what I told you this afternoon, haven't you? You need to be picky with your performance and use your heart when performing. You even spit blood, what was that for? Who asked you to do that? Dot. That night, the banquet ended without even really having a proper starting. All the officials and generals left with great disappointment. Zhu Ke only cared about shooting the film and did not care about those guests' feelings at all. The next day, Zhu Ke forced Buttface to perform better and finished the last part of his film. Madame Ya, Su Ling'er, Su Yanlin, and Su Zhao Qi all participated in the shooting, and their beautiful looks were all recorded. For the last part of the film, Roughly speaking, Zhu Ke made an amazingly delicious dish, which upset Buttface a lot. So Buttface came back to take his revenge and killed Madame Ya and the rest of them. Then, Zhu Ke lost in the fight against Buttface and fell off a cliff. Luckily, he found a lost book of powerful incantations and has been cultivating himself ever since. Many years later, he came back. On the last day of Zhu Ke's shooting, his Royal Highness came back to the Imperial Palace, so Zuke changed a bit of the storyline and made His Royal Highness the man behind the curtain, the man who asked Buttface to do all the bad things. Then Zuke killed His Royal Highness with all sorts of incantations. It took almost three days for Zuke to finish the shooting. On the third day, Zuke was very satisfied with the work he had just finished and took Buttface to the roof of the inn. He wanted to set up the signal booster to see if Lao Kai had topped up his phone or not. What? Again? No, no, no. I won't do that again. Buttface refused to be his signal booster with great determination. Well, I am not the type of person who would force people to do things they don't want to do. Zuke said, shaking his head. Then he took out a long thick, black stick and quickly sneaked up behind Buttface, bang. He hit Buttface on his head, and Buttface fainted instantly. Then Zuke dragged Buttface up to the roof of the inn. Just like he did last time, he set up four signal boosters, put a pile of pop cans up, and settled Buttface on top of the pop cans. After a short while, Zuke found his phone had received the signal. He excitedly logged into his WeChat and sent the film that he had shot to Lao Kai. Chapter 794 Zuke got a huge amount of acting tough points. Lao Kai is good. I never thought he would be willing to top up more than $20,000 to my phone. Zuke sat on the roof of the inn, feeling very happy and waiting for the film to be sent. But with the internet speed, it would probably take at least four to five days. Well, I can't just sit here waiting and doing nothing. Even if I am fine with this, I don't think Buttface would be willing to do so. But soon, Zuke came up with a good idea and summoned the system. System, give me ten strong sleeping pills with chocolate flavor. Wait, one more with grape flavor. Then he walked close to Buttface and said gently, Buttface, here, here, eat the chocolate. Buttface who was still practically in a coma, opened his mouth and swallowed all eleven sleeping pills. Cricky, I hope this amount of sleeping pills is not too much for him. This strong sleeping pill would even put an elephant to sleep for at least ten days. I guess Buttface will wake up about a year and a half from now after taking this amount of sleeping pills. Never mind, at least I won't be bothered by him for a long time. Zuke smiled and put the phone next to Buttface. He set up an array of spiritual level and left. During the next week, Zuke lived a very luxurious life in the Imperial Palace. He slept in Madame's bedroom for a few nights and in Su Yunlin's as well. From time to time, he also went to flirt with Su Ling'er and brought some chocolate to Su Zhao Qi. On the eighth day, he thought about the film business and went back to the roof of the inn. Buttface was still sleeping. 
his saliva drooling all around him. Zhu Ke was speechless when he saw this and picked up his phone. He was surprised to find that the phone had lost its connection to the internet. Luckily, the film had been successfully sent to Lao Ke, but because there was no internet, he had not received any messages from Lao Kai. What is going on? Zhu Ke frowned, as the film has been sent to Lao Ke, I am supposed to receive his messages, so something must have happened after it was sent. Right. The signal. Zhu Ke turned around to see Buttface and saw his feet were still on the cable. Then he looked around and noticed that one of the four signal boosters was burned out. Holy crap. It can't be burned out. Zhu Ke's eyes opened wide. He was so shocked. He hurriedly picked up the cable and put it back into the system's parcel. System, can you repair this burned out signal booster? Ding. After detecting it, the signal booster can't be repaired. The system answered quickly. No, no, no. I have to know how the box office went from my film. I can't lose connection with Earth. You have to help me. Zuke was almost going mad. However, his request was declined. Zuke was really upset. For him, the box office was not that important. The reason why he was so upset was that he had not even had the opportunity to get in touch with his sister. Screw you. I am really pissed off. Zuke clenched his fists and looked into the sky. There are only three ways left. Cultivate harder to get one big growth gift bag. Kill a cultivator of the great vehicle stage to get a big mystery bag or I continue to act tough in this world and earn enough acting tough points to upgrade the system into version 10.0, so I can get the space-breaking spell and go back to Earth. But none of them are easy to do. It seems that I should not waste time indulging myself here. It's time to go back to the four great continents. Zuke murmured and put away all the signal boosters and his phone, and headed to the palace, while carrying Buttface on his shoulder. Dot. Right at the same moment, on Earth, Lao Kai had just finished the shooting of his own film and received the film Zuke sent to him. After he watched it, he stayed at home for two whole days. From the technical perspective, this film sucks, really sucks. It is the worst film I have ever seen. The storyline is bad, the protagonist's performing skills suck comma dot still. There are two aspects that I have to give my compliments to. The computer-generated imagery is really fantastic, and the four female protagonists are gorgeous. But it is really a shame for them to participate in the shooting of such a bad film. It's a shame for the film industry. Lao Kai was both shocked and excited. The computer-generated imagery is of such a good quality, as far as I am concerned. No team in this world can make one as good as this one. All the scenes and incantations are just so real. The four extremely beautiful women would overshadow all the women in this world. I can't imagine what would happen once I released this film. The entire film industry would be shaken. Anyway, I can't get in touch with Zhu Ke. Why not release this film in his name? Then no one would verbally attack me or make fun of me if the film is not favored by audiences. Lao Kai said to himself while copying the film and beginning to edit it. It took him a total of three days to finish editing the film. He worked very hard to change the storyline to make it seem less ridiculous and sent it to the state administration of radio, film, and television. Two days later, the film was on the air in cinemas across China and stunned a huge amount of people. My God, who is the producer of this bloody film? The storyline is just terrible. The producer is Zhu Ke. This producer must be mad. The storyline just sucks, though the computer-generated imagery is awesome. How did he manage to make such a terrible film with such good computer-generated imagery? When I was watching, I really thought I was living in a cultivation world. The storyline is bad, as we all know, but I have to say that the computer-generated imagery is the best in the world. Besides, the actresses are also brilliant. Can anyone tell me who is the actress who played Su Linger in the film, who was the actress of Madame Ya? She is quite something. While I was watching the film, I even got sexually excited. How about the actress who plays Su Yunlin? Does anyone know who she is? I also found her extremely exciting. By the way, who is Zhu Yanzu? He is really handsome. From now on, Zhu Yanzu is my new idol. Screw you. Zhu Yanzu is just a gigolo, 
and his performing skills suck. There is only one good thing about him, and that is his handsome face. Dot. All sorts of remarks about this film were circulating on the internet. Some people felt sorry for the wonderful computer-generated imagery and all those marvelous female actresses, while most of them were trying their best to find out the names of all the actors and actresses. Zuke did not look like the same person when he was on Earth, so no matter how much effort people had put in searching Zuke on the internet, they could not find anything. The name Zuke had impressed many people though. For example, Zuke's university classmates, high school classmates, and anyone who knew Zuke all freaked out. Since on the day before the film went on air, Zuke posted a selfie on his WeChat moments. In the selfie, People saw a husky that looked exactly like Buttface in the film. A few days later, Zuke's film had a very good box office, leaving many great films behind. All the tycoons in the film industry were shocked. A film producer, Zhang Yi, said, Find me the team that made the computer-generated imagery. With their help, I will become number one on the list of famous people in the world. An investor said, Find me the producer of the film. I would invest in his films. Dot. At the same time, in Cultivation World, Zuke got a big surprise. In the last few days, he was heading to the Water Nation, together with Madame Ye, Su Yunlin, Su Linger, and Su Zhao Qi, to meet Zhang Hongyun. During the journey, the sound of the notification of the system kept ringing. Thanks to the film, he had received almost 300,000 acting tough points and soon the amount even doubled and he had earned a total of 600,000 acting tough points. Lao Kai must have got my film on air. It seems that I will soon be able to go back to Earth. People of Earth, I will soon come back. Dot. Half a month later, Zhu Kei finally arrived at the Water Nation with all his female friends. He had decided to go back to the Four Great Continents as soon as he found Zhang Hongyun. But when he stepped into the Imperial Palace, he could not feel Zhang Hongyun's existence. What has happened? Where has she gone? Zhu Ke murmured and felt a bit worried. Zhu Ke, what's wrong? Madame Ye asked. Never mind, we shall go in first. Then he went into the rear palaces, together with the rest of them. Even if Zhang Hongyun is not here, I can feel Zizhuan is still here, I should ask her what has happened. As soon as he arrived at the rear palaces, Zizhuan hurriedly ran up to him and said anxiously, Zhu Ke, you should have come back earlier. Something has happened to Hong Yun. What? Zhu Ke was stunned and could not believe his ears. What on earth has happened? Zizhuan shook her head and said, I don't know exactly. Since you left, Hong Yun had been cultivating herself. Yesterday, she came to tell me that she had something important to do in the four great continents and asked you not to wait for her return. She asks me not to wait for her return. Zuke was surprised and very worried. Dot. Chapter 795 Something terrible has happened. Hong Yun did not tell me what has happened. She just left rather hurriedly. I can feel something terrible has happened. Otherwise, she wouldn't act like this. Zizhuan frowned and seemed very worried. Hearing this, Zhu Ke nodded. Yes, something bad must have happened. Han Yun is always calm and has never behaved like this before. She would at least leave me a proper message. And she wouldn't have asked me to not wait for her? Is she asking me to not wait for her to return and go to the four great continents myself or asking me to give up on her? As far as I am concerned, nothing that happens in the four great continents would make her as anxious as this. Can it be possible that she is heading to the Xoanzan continent herself? Thinking of this, Zhu Ke felt very worried. If she really does goes there herself, I may not be able to see her again. After all, there are countless cultivators of the great vehicle stage in the Xoanzan continent. Zhu Ke, calm down. Maybe she really has something urgent thing to do. If you are really very worried, we can go to the four great continents right now. Madame Ye gently comforted him. Su Linger nodded. We all know the Water Empress is very powerful, and she just left yesterday. I think we can catch up with her if we leave now. Yes, calm down. We shall make our departure now. Su Yunlan said. They all knew quite well Zhu Ke's personality, and they could tell he was extremely worried seeing his face. Zhu Ke took a deep breath, and said, I am fine. Hong Yun is right. 
I should not wait for her. What? Zizhuan was astonished, as well as everyone else. I shall go by myself, since I guess Hong Yin is not heading to the four great continents. Instead, she is probably heading to the Xuanzan continent, which is more dangerous. What? They were shocked, since they only knew the existence of the four great continents outside of the Five Elements Mountain and had never heard that there was a Xuanzan continent. Suddenly, they all got rather upset and felt very unsure about their future, as if the way of cultivation was away with no end. There is no time to explain. Zhu Kei said, while taking out a refreshing pill and putting it into Buttface's mouth. The refreshing pill was very expensive and cost around 3,000 acting tough points. But since it was urgent, Zhu Kei felt it was time to wake Buttface up. As soon as the refreshing pill touched Buttface's lips, he instantly woke up. Who spoils my sweet dream? Bang! Zhu Kei slapped Buttface and shook his shoulder. Buttface, wake up, something bad has happened. What? Buttface was shocked and was about to run away. Zhu Kei knew he would do so and hurriedly caught him up. Be serious and listen to me. I need to leave here now. You go to Snow City and bring Si Chu Hai Tang and her army here. Then you should all head to the South Continent to find Zixi a fairy. What? Buttface was a bit surprised. What for? Ask her to protect you lot. Before we come back, all of you should cultivate yourselves in the mysterious land in the South Continent. If she does not want to look after you, just tell her that Joker asked you to go to find her. Do you understand me? Zhu Kei said with a serious face. Buttface had never seen Zhu Kei like this before so he did not dare to contradict and nodded. You can count on me for this. Zhu Kei then turned to Su Linger and the rest. He felt very sorry and his lips trembled a bit, as if he was trying to say something. After all, he had promised them that once he became famous in the four great continents, he would personally pick them up and take them there. But now, he could not do so. At this moment, Madame Ye could tell Zhu Kei was in a very difficult situation. So she smiled at Zhu Kei. Don't worry about us, you should go now. Su Yunlin also smiled. Even if you asked us to go with you, we won't go, since it is a dangerous place and I think we will make you distracted if we are there. Hurry up, we will wait for you in the South Continent. Su Linger smiled. Under these circumstances, they knew that they could not act like children and ask Zhu Kei to take them with him. They did not care if Zhu Kei would personally take them to the four great continents, they only worried about Zhu Kei's safety. Although everyone was smiling, they could all see the worrying looks hidden behind the smiling. Zhu Kei gently touched their faces and said, Don't worry, I will be back and meet you in the south continent. Even the sky can't kill me, so no one in this world can hurt me. We will wait for you. Madame Ye nodded. Su Linger and Su Younglin also nodded. Su Zhao Chi said, Promise me you will come back. The chocolate you have given me cannot last for too long. Buttface also yelled, and the stinky tofu, hamburger, ice cream, fried chicken, coffee, etc. Zhu Kei ignored Buttface and turned to look at Zhang Hongyun's bedroom. Next to her bedroom was the teleportation device that led to the East Continent. But Zhang Hongyun had left a day earlier and the teleportation device was so old, it was impossible for Zhu Kei to catch up with Zhang Hongyun. If Zhang Hongyun really went to the Xuanzan Continent, I have to go there because she is still not that powerful enough. It is very risky for her to face all those powerful cultivators all by herself. If I can catch up with her, I can try my best to stop her from going to the Xuanzan continent. The clock is ticking and I have to hurry up. Zhu Kei, promise me that you will protect Hong Yin and bring her back safe and sound. Zizhuan said to Zhu Kei with a serious face. I will. Zhu Kei nodded. Then he turned around to see his female followers once again, and walked out of the palace. Zizhuan was a bit confused and said abruptly, Zhu Kei, you are going in the wrong direction. The teleportation device is that way. In the blink of an eye, Zhu Kei changed into lightning that penetrated the clouds and disappeared. Dot. In a short while, Zhu Kei appeared on the outside of the Scarlet Yang faction. Not very long ago. The Scarlet Yang faction asked the Gong family to send some people to kill Zhu Kei, but, in the end, 
They were almost wiped out by the Gong family. All the sect leaders had been killed and the head of the Scarlet Yang faction had been taken to the Gong family to be punished. After the head of the Scarlet Yang faction was taken away, all the young cultivators ran away. By now, the Scarlet Yang faction had already been occupied by other factions. As soon as Zhu Ke stepped into door, he was immediately recognized. Crap, it's Zhu Ke. The evil man has come. Let's run. The Scarlet Yang faction has already been wiped out. Why on earth does he come here? Does he come to kill us? Hearing this, many people started to escape. Zhu Ke did not bother to talk with these people and quickly dashed to the hall of the Scarlet Yang faction. Why you are here? A few old cultivators were terrified to see him and asked in terror. This place is now controlled by the Exploding Heavens faction. I order you to leave in 15 minutes. Otherwise, I will kill you all. Zhu Ke sneered, strode forward, and closed the door. In fact, Zhu Ke did this for their sakes. If they ever knew there was a teleportation device that led to the four great continents, they might be tempted to go there and would definitely be killed by the Gong family. In a short while, Zhu Ke found where the teleportation device was. Then he crushed a wall on one side and an enormous array appeared. Zhang Hongyan, please don't do anything stupid. Zhu Ke murmured. Then he took out a few pieces of spiritual stones of top quality, threw them on the altar, and stepped onto the array. Dot. Chapter 796 Zhang Hongyan came. Two months later, in the Valley of the Gong family, a ball of shining white light appeared, surprising all the Gong family members. A few sect leaders, together with ten young cultivators, came to the valley, trying to find out what had happened. Who are you? How dare you enter the array of the Gong family? A cultivator yelled. In just a few seconds, the white light disappeared and Zhu Ke slowly walked out. All of a sudden, all the members of the Gong family were shocked. Zhu Ke, why on earth is he here? There is really nothing we can give you apart from some needles and threads. My dear friend, welcome, welcome. A sect leader said, his voice trembling. My friend, don't worry, the head of the Scarlet Yang faction is imprisoned. If you have any other requests, Please tell us. Zhu Ke nodded emotionlessly and said with a deep voice, I don't care about the Scarlet Yang faction. Anyway, from now on, without my permission, none of you can ever go to the Five Elements Mountain again. Do you hear me? Sure. We promise, we will never go to the Five Elements Mountain again. The sect leaders said all together. In fact, for them, the Five Elements Mountain was useless which explained why they had not sent anyone there in the past. Remember what you have said just now. Zhu Ke said and quickly left. When Zhu Ke was gone, the sect leaders wiped the cold sweat from their foreheads and were relieved. They looked at one another for a while. Then they all left and went back to tell what had transpired to their patriarchs. Dot. Soon, Zhu Ke came to the top of a huge mountain. In fact, Zhu Ke might have come to the four great continents a few days earlier than Zhang Hongyan, as the teleportation device beneath Zhang Hongyan's bedroom was rather old. Zhu Ke thought he could go to a desolate village and wait for Hongyan, but he was not sure if he had really arrived a few days earlier than Hongyan. Since, the last time he had seen her, Hongyan had used her spell mending stone to speed up the teleportation device. What if she had repaired the old teleportation device and had already arrived earlier than me? It would take me a few days to go to that village. What if my calculation of time is wrong? Anyway, I have to know where she is heading to next. The Zhang family or the North Sea? Now that the lock in the Five Elements Mountain has been destroyed. The lock here in the four great continents becomes much stronger. It will not be easy for her to go to the Xoanzan continent. I wonder how will she do that, though. It's time to use my clutch shot. Then he summoned the system and shouted, System, activate the lucky aura. He took off his shoes and threw them high up into the sky, while guessing which direction Zhang Hongyan was heading. Bang! The shoes fell onto the ground and pointed to the southeast. Zhu Ke was a bit stunned. She is heading in the opposite direction of that village. Zhu Ke frowned and threw his shoes again. Bang! This time, the shoes pointed to the southeast again. I believe in the lucky aura. He put on his shoes and quickly headed to the southeast. During the journey, he stopped four times, 
and each time he would throw his shoes two times to double check. Five days later, he arrived at a barren plain. Here again? Zuke was surprised. He was standing outside of the celestial burial valley, right in front of the, the ancient bronze hall. Last time, I also took a long journey and came all the way here by throwing my shoes. I never thought I would be back here again, even earlier than Hongyun. But the Celestial Burial Valley was supposed to lead to the Xuanling continent, not the Xuanzan continent. Can it be possible that Hongyun is heading to the Xuanling continent? No, this can't be. Why on earth does she need to go there? Wait a minute, she wants to get into the ancient Bronze Hall again? Thinking of this. Zhu Kei suddenly raised up his head and stared at the floating ancient bronze hall in front of him. He remembered that those powerful cultivators from the Xuanzan continent always said that the ancient bronze hall is also called the Immortal Hall, and could help people to reincarnate. After Zhang Hongyun walked out from the ancient bronze hall, she never came back. Why does she want to come here? I have to stop her. Zhu Kei stopped guessing and immediately summoned his Taoist body that had long silver hair. He also gave the long black stick to his Taoist body, so the Taoist body could help him to stop Hong Yun getting into the ancient bronze hall. Sometimes, only by being tough can a difficult problem be solved. Since the black stick would not hurt people, people who were hit would not feel any pain. So Tu Zhu Kei thought Zhang Hongyun would be able to take it. Then he chanted some inscriptions and changed into a transparent figure and hid in the dark, waiting for the right moment. At the same time, he slowly walked to the place that was right beneath the immortal hall, took out a beach chair, and lay on it. He was still not sure if the lucky aura had taken him to the right place, but, for now, he could do nothing but wait. Besides, to increase the chances of Zhang Hongyun's coming here, he even activated a lucky aura that cost a huge amount of acting tough points. After an hour, maybe it was because of the red rope of marriage or the lucky aura, Zhang Hongyun came. Chapter 797 Sigh. Leave if you want to. Swash. Zuke lay on the chair. He had heard the commotion from afar. A red light flashed through the sky. It pierced the sound barrier and, with lightning speed, flew toward him. What came near was a familiar silhouette, a familiar aura. It was none other than Zhang Hongyun. Clunk. Zhu Kei jumped out of his chair right away and, with a great leap, stood right before the entrance of the Immortal Hall. Then he fixed his gaze at Zhang Hongyun still far away. Since she is here, it meant that his guess was right. She must want to enter the ancient Bronze Hall. Swoosh. Very quickly. Zhang Hongyun finally arrived. Upon seeing him, her beautiful face was full of surprise. Little one, you dot why are you here? Zhu Kei shook his head and laughed. Tsk tsk tsk, little missy, you're too naughty, sneaking out when I'm not around. Luckily, I'm smart enough to guess that you'll be here. Zhu Kei blocked the way to the immortal hall with his body solidly as he uttered those words. It was the only entrance into the hall after all. Zhang Hongyun watched his actions with mild interest, then shook her head. Sadness flashed into her eyes as she said, Little one, let me enter. No way. Tell me, what are you planning to do? Why would you need to enter the immortal hall again? Zhu Kei asked. Zhang Hongyun fell silent for a moment, then answered. The Immortal Hall is the single one-way road to the Xuanzan continent. I need to go back. Otherwise, in less than two years, not only will I die. Even the four great continents will be wiped out. Zhu Kei was taken aback by her words. Does the Immortal Hall lead to the Xuanzan continent? But shortly after, he heaved a sigh of relief. You don't need to worry about the Xuanzan continent invading us. Everything's fine. I have opened the seal of the Five Elements Mountain. The shackles of the four great continents, at its current state, is enough to protect the four great continents for several decades. It's not about the shackles. Zhang Hongyun shook her head, a self-mocking smile on her face. I have recovered a portion of my memories. That person had extracted a piece of my soul and instilled it into the God Realization Tree. Counting the years that had passed, the God Realization fruit on that tree could ripen any time now. If he consumed and refined it, he could immortalize right away and achieve the celestial stage. When that happens, 
all of my kismet and cultivation will become his. The four continents will fall into a disaster should that happen. What? Zhu Ke asked in disbelief. Zhang Hongyan's father from her previous life was that insane? In the end, that was the reason he made her undergo rebirth and achieve a multitude of kismet. His real motive was not just to control the Xuanzan continent, but to strip them all from Zhang Hongyan once he reached the celestial stage. More horrifyingly, he had even extracted a piece of Zhang Hongyan's soul and nurtured a god realization tree, all to achieve the celestial stage. He thought he was more terrible than a senseless beast. Should he achieve the celestial stage, the first move he would make would be to find me in the four great continents and take back that celestial artifact that allowed me to be reborn. By then, the shackles of the four great continents would not be enough to stop him. That's why I must return to the Xuanzan continent. Even if I could not destroy the god realization tree, at least I would not implicate the four great continents. Zhang Hongyan spoke again, her beautiful eyes boring straight into Zhu Ke. That's why dot little one, let me pass, won't you? So that's why. Zhu Ke laughed bitterly. That's what you meant when you told me not to wait for you. Caught by surprise, Zhang Hongyan quickly recovered a slight smile. Then don't go. Give me two, no, one year. I will destroy the god realization tree with my own two hands for you and then bring your soul back. Zhu Ke said seriously. In a year, he is confident that he could at least achieve the form synthesis stage. By then, with the king of tough acting fist and Buddha seal, he would have enough power to fight against a powerhouse at the peak of the great vehicle stage. It'll be too late. The god realization fruit will ripen within six months. No one can stop him then. Zhang Hongyan disagreed. She slowly stepped toward Zhu Ke. Zhu Ke knew that with Zhang Hongyan's character, stopping her was no use. She might even fight him to barge into the immortal hall. Forget it. Suddenly, Zhu Ke sighed, his face crestfallen and he moved aside voluntarily. He said, with a small voice, leave if you want. I don't want to stop you. If you can bear to leave me, then leave. Zhang Hongyan was surprised. She didn't think that he would give in this easily, but she still smiled. If given a chance, I will definitely return. With that said, her silhouette shook as she determinedly swept toward the entrance of the immortal hall. Quickly she pulled out a jade disc which shone brightly. She then slapped it onto the bronze door. Boom! The whole of the immortal hall shook and creaked loudly. Then, the door started to tremble, and it waved like a curtain of water. Swoosh! Almost at the same moment, a black-clad shadow with platinum hair flew past. It was the Taoist body that Zhu Ke had long prepared beforehand. With a black rod in his hand, he plunged toward Zhang Hongyan's back. But then, this time, as if reading his move, Zhang Hongyan reacted and gracefully stepped aside. Clunk! The black rod hit the bronze walls instead. The collision emitted a trembling echo throughout the hall. Damn it! Zhu Ke stared, eyes wide, as his Taoist body failed in his sneak attack. Right then, awkwardly, he also felt Zhang Hongyan's gaze fall upon him. Little guy, I still remember that move. She smiled gently but in the end did not lecture him, because she understood Zhu Ke's intentions. He could not bear for her to leave like that. Sigh. Zhu Ke sighed, as though he had finally run out of options. He lifted his head and asked, I failed, but I want to ask you one last time. Must you go? Zhang Hongyan fell silent, and finally nodded solemnly. Yes, looks like I shouldn't have come. Zhu Ke lifted his head and asked Zhang Hongyan. Could we leave with some memories at least? Okay. Zhang Hongyan agreed without hesitation. Before you go, kiss me. Zhu Ke teased. Zhang Hongyan paused for a while, her eyes fixed on Zhu Ke. Then she smiled, okay, thank you. Zhu Ke nodded, then walked toward Zhang Hongyan. He slowly lifted his hand, a little smile on his face, his eyes filled with emotions that yelled that no. He could not bear to let her go. He caressed her exquisite face that was otherworldly beautiful, the feeling of her skin on his fingers silky and supple. Promise me, you must come back, okay? Zhu Ke asked softly. He had honestly given up on stopping her. Yes. Zhang Hongyan nodded, 
with a flicker of struggle in her eyes. Zhu Ke slowly inched his face toward her, and soon their nose bridges touched. The distance between their lips was but a few millimeters. Zhang Hanyan subconsciously closed her eyes, the corners of her eyes moist. But at that very moment, Zhu Ke suddenly held out his arms and pulled Zhang Hanyan into a tight embrace. He roared, the ultimate skill of exploding heaven's faction. Embracing a cute girl, boom. Under his steps came a bolt of lightning. With overwhelming strength, he scooped Zhang Hanyan to his chest and crashed the bronze door now unlocked. A tremendous pull came flying out of the gates toward them. In the blink of an eye, the two of them disappeared into the bronze doors. The huge immortal hall also disappeared shortly after. Chapter 798 Please remove your filthy hand. In an endless, pitch black darkness, Tides of emptiness and coldness wafted through Zhu Ke's body. Zhu Ke trembled slightly, then snapped his eyes open. Zhang Hanyan was no longer in his arms. Engulfed by a great pull, all he could see and reach was a vast and borderless nothingness. Zhu Ke realized right away that he was still being transported to the Xuanzan continent. He had lost consciousness right after he pulled Zhang Hanyan to his chest and lunged into the doors of the Immortal Hall. The same had most likely happened to Zhang Hongyan, and they had been separated. But if there was one thing he could feel relieved about, it was that he could still feel Zhang Hongyan's aura nearby. Although, this nothingness that had consumed him was just too mysterious. With only his eyes, he could not see Zhang Hongyan's whereabouts. Hongyan. He hollered. His voice was immediately swallowed by the vast nothingness, causing not even a single ripple. Still. He had to find Hong Yun. Zhu Ke tried to move his body. However, no matter how much he tried, he could not break away from this strong pull holding him firmly in place. Crap. It seems like if I could only. He started to mumble. Before he could finish, a bright light suddenly appeared before him. Boom. A massive crash. And, as if someone had violently torn into the pitch black nothingness from the outside, an enormous wall of white. Blinding light rays pierced him like a thousand arrows. Crap. Zhu Ke immediately initiated the true core strength within his body. He even used the tough acting fist, but he still could not stop the force from pulling him into the light. Amid the chaos, he caught a glimpse of a familiar figure. It was Zhang Hongyan. The two of them stared at each other, mouths slightly agape, but the white light had once again devoured them both before they could say anything. Dot. At the same time, the Xuanzan continent appeared, atop a massive plain, where countless cultivators fought to the death. Like a thousand armies, they trampled the whole battlefield. Howls, battle drums, resounding between heaven and earth. Kill. We from the heaven orc tribe will never be slaves. A large orc growled. He stood at least two meters tall and had a massive axe in his hand. Kill. Behind him, countless towering. Strong soldiers immediately exploded into loud howls as they swarmed the battlefield. At the same time, the army of human cultivator troops on the opposite side too raised their long spears. They yelled, protect our home, kill the orcs, boom. The orcs and the human troops crashed into each other, and an immeasurable amount of colorful and powerful spells lit up the sky. It was as if they had covered the sun with their constant bombardments. Right at the point where the explosions were the most powerful, the skies tore, forming a void crack. Nobody thought much of it. It was normal for void cracks to form atop a battlefield. Therefore, no one noticed that two figures had fallen out of the crack and hurled straight toward a mountain peak nearby. The peak, situated right at the border of this battlefield, was currently occupied by a small orc tribe. A pretty dark-skinned woman led a team of strong and well-built orcs in preparation to withdraw via mountain routes. <laughs> Wait, I caught the whiff of humans. Living humans. The woman waved her army to an abrupt halt. Following the soul strength detected, everyone's gaze quickly fell onto the two figures lying in the middle of the mountain road. A male and female human in void training stage. Hey. That's interesting. Tie them up and throw them into prison. I will interrogate them myself. 
the dark-skinned female orc smiled cruelly. Zuke found himself in a dark and humid cell when he regained consciousness. A stinging and repulsive smell of blood filled the air. What was more shocking was that the ground surrounding him was dotted with dried blood patches and littered with what seemed like minced flesh and severed limbs. It was hell on earth. Oh crap, where the hell is this? Is this what the Xoans incontinent is like? Aghast. Zuke subconsciously scanned his surroundings. He soon realized that he was locked in a horrible cage. His captor had bound him using a unique method, and all of his limbs were tied up with an iron chain. Wasn't that overkill? Zuke snorted and exerted the strength of his arms, attempting to break out of the chains. The smile on his face immediately faltered. He had, after all, practiced the Hell King's prison suppression style. His body was multiple times stronger than an ordinary cultivator. Logically speaking, even with his cultivation sealed, he should be able to break a mere iron chain quite easily. System, what the hell is with this chain? Zuke checked with the system. After a short while, the system replied, Ding. After analyzing the chain, we have identified this metal as the immortal suppression steel an alloy made from a special metal and tau aura. You could not break it with brute force alone unless your body has become a saint. Would you like to spend 5,000 acting tough points to break it with the tau aura? Estimated dismantal time, 1 hour. Crap. Did they use tau aura to forge a chain used to lock people up? Wasn't that too extravagant? Taken aback. Zuke thought half-heartedly that the Xuan's incontinent was indeed rich and powerful. But dot no matter how powerful they are, the system beats them all. Break it. Zuke smiled and ordered the system to dismantle the chains. In the meantime, he released his soul strength and tried to detect Zhang Hanyan Zora. However, he found nothing after combing the whole cell as if he was the only person in here. Clunk. The doors of the metal cage moved and made a deep sound. Zuke lifted his head. He saw a dark-skinned, sexy woman enter the prison, with several tall orcs behind her. Ha, ha, humans are surely weak. To think that you would pass out for so long. She looked at Zuke, as she smiled disdainfully. Zuke frowned instantly. This woman and the giants behind her seemed not to be human. Instead, they carried a faint scent of demonic beasts. Why have you brought me here? Zuke asked guardedly. Zuke was calm. He just had to wait for the system to break the immortal suppression steel chain. Once he was free, he was sure that he could defeat them all. The cultivation of those tall orcs was just at the peak of the form synthesis stage. Zuke could settle them with a punch of the tough acting fist. As for that woman, she had the strength of a crossing calamity stage cultivator. Although he shouldn't belittle her, winning was still a possibility. Ha, ha, humans are such hypocrites. You have fought with us, the Heaven Orc tribe, for years. And now you're still pretending to be a fool, demanding to know why I had captured you? Zuke twitched at her words. Seems like she had taken him as her prisoner. Crap. That's some bad luck right there. It was so humiliating for the great act tough saint to be imprisoned right after he reached the Xoan's incontinent. But then again, a young boy with your looks is considered top-notch even within the human race. White and clean, you're a rare find. To his surprise, the woman approached Zuke and caressed his cheeks. Zuke was stunned. What the heck? What was she thinking? And why did he feel like an innocent girl teased by a playboy? Yours truly has played with many human men, but I have never tried someone as weak and as fair-skinned as you. The woman continued talking, her eyes filled with greed. She rested her palm on his cheeks, which then slid down against his skin, all the way to his chest. Angered by this apparent molestation, Zuke stopped her. Stop. What are you doing? Real men prefer death to humiliation. I will never succumb. Ha ha ha. Never succumb? No man in the world could resist me. The woman chuckled loudly as if she heard something hilarious. In her eyes, Zuke was already her plaything. Zuke snorted coldly, his face filled with disdain. I'm sorry. Someone like you doesn't excite me at all. My little brother is on leave today and doesn't react at all. I think he might even want to laugh. Please remove your filthy hand. Zuke slapped her hand away directly to stop her violation. She, on the other hand, 
stood stunned and confused as she looked at the two arms bound tightly by the immortal suppression steel chain. He dot what did he use to slap my hand away? Chapter 799, A Cheeky Idea, Lowly Human, How Dare You Fight Back? Snarled the dark-skinned woman, angered by his actions. Boom. Suddenly, there was a massive crash as something exploded outside the prison, as if an enormous object had landed. Almost immediately, many screams arose from outside. What happened? The woman was startled. So were the orcs behind her. They all turned to face the door. Zhu K2 raised his gaze to the door, and, at the same time, released his soul strength to sweep the cell. Beyond the gates, a potent spell had blanketed the large campground. It was as if the whole firmament was engulfed, a constant stream of lightning bolts descended from the skies, as if someone was crossing a calamity. However, it was merely a magic cart. Boom. The bolts shattered the ground with every strike, forcing the giant soldiers to run around, hands over their heads. Some unlucky ones got hit after running a few steps. They fell to the ground instantly and became a pile of mushy blood and meat. Some of them howled at the skies and used magic carts, trying to fight skywards. However, they were rendered defenseless by the prowess of the thunderbolts that fell from the sky. Gosh. This is powerful. Zhu K was astounded by what he saw. The power of this heavenly thunder magic art was much more powerful than it looked. After all, these giants were all at the form synthesis stage. Without the heaven and earth seal and the king of tough acting fist, even Zhu K himself could not injure them severely with a basic magic art. How dare you wreak havoc at my camp? You're asking for death. The woman standing beside Zuke threatened coldly and suddenly moved. Swoosh. She transformed into a blood-red beam and rushed out. The few remaining giants looked at each other but stayed behind. They stood guard to prevent Zuke from running away. Isn't it too cowardly, to have so many of you in the form synthesis stage to guard against me, a single cultivator in the void training stage? You should help them quickly. I promise not to run. Zuke persuaded them smiling. Alas, those giants refused to budge and ignored him. Like logs, they stood firmly right where they were. With an average height of 10 feet, it was as if they were pillars. It was apparent that they had no intention of speaking, and there was nothing he could do. Zuke shook his head and tried to look outside again. However, there was a restriction placed in the prison cell. As such, Zuke's soul strength could only scan within the room and not beyond the door. Therefore, he could only physically strain his eyes to peer out of the door, trying to figure out who exactly is this powerful cultivator who is laying waste to the camp. He was then quickly astonished by what he saw. A silhouette suddenly leaped into the sky, it was the woman who called herself the female general. With a hurried expression, she leaped upwards to flee only to be struck down by a golden magic cart. Bam! A muffled bang and the dark-skinned woman fell straight out of the sky. She coughed out a lot of blood, and the ground cracked into a spider web when she landed. Swoosh! Right after, a shadow clad in red emerged and summoned a few bolts of lightning with a wave of her slender arm. They killed the female general instantly. Hongyan, Zuke couldn't help but call out in shock. The person who killed the dark-skinned woman was none other than Zhang Hongyan. She had killed the powerhouse at the crossing calamity stage just like that, so effortlessly and without any hiccups. Not to forget that Zhang Hongyan's cultivation was just at the second stage of the crossing calamity. You're amazing my big sis Hong Yun. Zhu Ke muttered under his breath. Initially, he had thought that he had a clear idea of Zhang Hong Yun's strength. She was strong, stronger than those faction patriarchs in the four great continents, but she was also just at the second stage of calamity crossing. At most, she would be on par with those powerhouses from the outside. But who would have thought that she would be powerful enough to easily kill a cultivator at the crossing calamity stage? No, at the peak of the crossing calamity stage. With such overwhelming prowess, it's very likely that she could even fight a powerful being at the great vehicle stage. No wonder she dared to come over to the Xoanzan continent alone. With this strength, she's on a par with me. No, I reckon that she's even more powerful than me. Zhu Ke smiled bitterly. He had been unbeatable for so long that he had underestimated Zhang Hongyun's powers. Maybe before this, 
he had been indeed stronger than Zhang Hongyun. But after she had made it through all these tribulations and officially stepped into the void training stage, the depth of her strength had become unreadable. Especially so after she spent several years to attain awakening in the Immortal Hall, where her powers had not stopped growing since. Therefore, although she was still at the second stage of Calamity Crossing, she could already overwhelm most of her opponents. General. The remaining orcs in the prison cell suddenly cried out. Upon witnessing Zhang Hongyun killing the dark-skinned woman, their eyes had immediately became bloodshot. Boom. Consumed by fury, they whipped up a stormy wind as they barged out of the cell, forgetting all about Zhu Kei. Outside, a calm and collected Zhang Hongyun awaited. On her fingers, a golden glow shone brightly. Swish. She waved her hand casually and magic ensued. Lightning arrived at the ceiling of the dome and on her command, struck down at the land. Crack. With a stifled crash, the bolts launched those giants to the sky, their huge bodies cracked open and bloody. Then, a golden gleam slid past their throats, and a few struggles later, they lost all signs of life. At that moment, the whole camp became deathly quiet. Zhu Kei had surprise plastered all over his face. Till now, he could not wrap his mind around what had happened. The strength that Zhang Hongyun had displayed was beyond his wildest imagination. Swoosh! Zhang Hongyun lifted her hand again, this time pointing toward Zhu Kei, thunk, a crisp and metallic clank. The immortal suppression steel chain binding Zhu Kei all this while had been severed by the golden gleam, and Zhu Kei was once again a free man. The corners of Zhu Kei's mouth twitched. The immortal suppression steel chain was almost indestructible, even though he would have broken it easily once he reached the form synthesis stage, he would never have thought that Zhang Hongyun could cut it by merely raising a finger. Wait, hold on, didn't this mean that he had just wasted 5000 acting tough points? System, system, come out now. I want a refund, I don't need you to break the immortal suppression steel chain anymore. Zhu Kei shouted to himself. The system replied coldly, Ding. After analyzing the situation, the dismantling progress of the immortal suppression steel chain stood at 60%. Therefore, only 2000 points will be refunded. Zhu Kei felt a little better hearing that. So the chain was already 60% destroyed when Zhang Hongyun arrived. That's more reasonable than her cutting it with a single point of her finger. Otherwise, she would be too powerful. Little one. Zhang Hongyun stood before him, her eyes boring long and deep into his. Zhu Kei felt guilty and touched the bridge of his nose uneasily. He understood what she was expressing with her gaze. She wanted to say that he shouldn't have come, but could not bring herself to bury him. A, hey, Hongyun, is this the Xuanzan continent? It's indeed quite amazing. The humans here are tall like pillars. Zhu Kei quickly changed the topic and pointed at the giants sprawling on the ground. They are from the Heaven Orc tribe. Zhang Hongyun shook her head and answered softly. Heaven Orc tribe? Are they children of humans and demonic beasts? Zhu Kei asked. He had heard the dark-skinned woman mention that they were from the Heaven Orc tribe. He had also sensed a tinge of demon beast aura from those people. Nevertheless, he still felt something amiss. In both the Five Elements Mountain and the Four Great Continents, he had seen many who had descended from humans and demonic beasts, such as Sulinger. However, their aura had been slightly different. No, they aren't pure-blooded demonic beasts. They had just been fed blood of both humans and demonic beasts since young, and they had never absorbed any spiritual chi from heaven and earth. Instead, they strip the true cores of other demonic beasts and humans and that's why they tend to be physically powerful, said Zhang Hongyun, her face slightly icy. She seemed to bear some ill feelings against the Heaven Orc tribe. Zhu Kei was also surprised. He didn't expect that there would be people who cultivate in such a brutal and senseless way, drinking the blood of demonic beasts and humans. They had essentially evolved into a new species by robbing the cultivation of others. Does this count as an unorthodox genetic manipulation? How do they rob the cultivation of others? Zhu Kei asked seriously. He remembered what that dark-skinned woman had tried to do earlier. Maybe she had wanted to strip him of his practice by paired cultivation. Zhang Hongyun just shook her head. They have a lot of ways to do that. When I woke up just now, 
They had tried to slice my arteries with a knife. I stopped them before they could do it. Have they done anything to you, me? I'm fine. Of course, that dark-skinned woman lusted over my handsome face and wanted to force herself on me, but all I could think about was your safety, so I rejected her firmly. Zhu Ke answered righteously. Zhang Hongyan couldn't resist smiling at his words, as if she was happy to hear that Zhu Ke was worried about her safety. When you're caught in such a situation next time, protect yourself first. She said quietly, that won't do, what meaning do I have left to live for should anything terrible happen to you? Zhu Ke patted his chest and said quickly, Zhang Hongyan was surprised speechless, then came to realize why Zhu Ke had insisted on coming into the Xuanzan continent with her. What meaning do I have left to live for should anything terrible happen to you? That sentence kept echoing in Zhang Hongyan's heart. After a while, Zhu Ke looked around and asked, Confused, we made such a ruckus. Why isn't anyone coming to help them? Zhang Hongyan recovered from her thoughts and spared a light glance at the outside. She replied, they're all dead. Huh? Zhu Ke's eyes got wide. You mean, everyone in this camp are all dead? Yup. Zhang Hongyan nodded calmly. You killed them all? Yup. Just like that, with what you did just now. You've killed them all? Yup. Wow. Zhu Ke can't help but be amazed once again. This camp, to say the very least, would have had several hundred powerful cultivators at the form synthesis stage. But Zhang Hongyan had killed them all like they were ants. Even that female general at the peak of the crossing calamity stage was no different. In front of Zhang Hongyan, she could, at most, withstand a few rounds of attack before losing in an instant. Her strength is really out of this world. That would most likely be what he could do, without the aid of the heaven and earth seal and the tough acting fist, when he stepped into the form synthesis stage in the future. He would probably only be on par with her or use much more effort than she did. Colon as I thought. Zhu Ke let out an emotion-filled sigh. Zhang Hongyan was confused. What? Zhu Ke gave her a radiant smile. As the old saying goes, know a man from the company he keeps. Little Hongyan, after all this while that you've followed me, your strength has finally improved. I'm reassured. Zhang Hongyan couldn't contain her laughter. Little one, quit speaking like an old man. Hey, I'm just mature. Come on, little lady, give me your hand. Brother Zhu Ke will lead you as we roam the world. Zhu Ke laughed, and, without asking, took up her hand and stepped out of the prison cell. Zhang Hongyan smiled slightly and followed him naturally, as if she s already used to him holding her hands like this. Her eyes shone warmly. Then, she reminded him softly, this is where the Heaven Orc had set up their battlefield outpost. They have hundreds of camps here. If you're planning to walk out like that, I'm afraid that we can't leave that easily. What? Zhu Ke stopped in his tracks, and asked incredulously, You mean that we are in the middle of their turf? Why would you make such a large commotion then? What if they surrounded us after finding out what happened? I was worried about your safety. Zhang Hongyan looked at Zhu Ke, calm as usual, a light and seemingly simple answer, but for some reason, it warmed Zhu Ke's heart. He tightened his grip around Zhang Hongyan's little hand, and smiled. No worries, you rescued me from the cell just now, so it's my turn to lead you out of here. Okay. Zhang Hongyan beamed and nodded, agreeing with him unconditionally. Zhu Ke was happy at her change. After listening to her description, Zhu Ke had a rough idea of the situation of this Heaven Orc tribe battle outpost. The whole battle outpost consisted of tens of form synthesis stage orcs and hundreds of void training stage powerhouses. There were one or two generals, all of them at the crossing calamity stage. Their overall strength was no joke. Almost all the camps are connected. As such, Camps would be alerted once something happened in other camps nearby. Zhang Hongyan had caused a great commotion just now but did not raise the alert of other camps. Looks like she had astoundingly good luck on her side. Sitting at the very end of the mountains, the camp that they were taken to was disconnected from the others due to the terrain. That was the reason why the other camps had not discovered them yet. However, there was only one way to return to human territory. They had to cut through all the hundreds of camps in front of them, for if they had walked further in, 
they would have entered too deep into the lair of the heaven orc tribe. That would be akin to sending a sheep into a tiger's mouth. But cutting through hundreds of camps was difficult. Even Zhang Hongyan could not win easily against hundreds of crossing calamity stage powerhouses, no matter how strong she was. Looks like we need to stir some trouble. Poop, no, I mean we have to win using our brains. Zhu Kei's eyes shone as he smiled cheekily. Have you got an idea? Zhang Hongyun laughed. Yup. When your enemy greatly outnumbers you, the best way to deal with them is to dot dissolve them from the inside. Zhu Kei nodded as his smile deepened. He had thought of a wicked idea. One characteristic of the Heaven Orc tribe was that the males tended to be muscular, mostly hovering around 10 feet, with some reaching even more, while for the females, the more petite they were, the stronger, the darker, the mightier. The intensity of their demonic beast scent represents the degree of their powers. On that very day, Zuke created two high-class disguise puppets and altered both their appearances, including their scent, to be precisely the same as the Heaven Orc tribe. They blended in so well with the orcs that no one could tell the difference. Then, he took out hundreds of pieces of black paper from the female general's tent. The kind of paper commonly used by the orcs. Fishing out a pen, he mimicked the heaven orc tribe language and began to write fluidly. I am Buttface, hailing from the exploding heavens faction. I was killed during the great war between immortals and demons tens of thousands of years ago. My opponent threw my body into a river and escaped. I have condensed tens of thousands of years worth of resentment into this letter. When you see this, please pass it to four other people. Should you fail to do that, your mother will die in 30 days, and a demonic beast will devour your father. If you follow my instructions, the person you like will return your feelings, and your dreams will come true. I'm sorry, I'm not buttface. Just that this message is just too vicious, so I had no choice but to send it to you. Chapter 800 disturbance caused by the curse letters. A dark and windy night was always a good time for killing. Zuke didn't plan to kill. He sneaked into hundreds of campsites together with Zhang Hongyun. With the help of the disguise puppets, they posed as soldiers of the Heaven Orc tribe. Nobody could see through their disguises. Now they were hiding more than 100 curse letters in those campsites. At daybreak, Zhu Kei and Zhang Hongyun had reached the campsite at the front line. It was a special position. Once they went through this campsite and kept flying for several days, they would reach the territory of mankind. However, this campsite was heavily garrisoned. The front line was not only full of restrictive spells, but also closely monitored by many patrolling soldiers. Several powerhouses at the Crossing Calamity stage were guarding the front line. They could even sense a horrible aura from the Marshal's campsite, which was from a powerhouse at the Great Vehicle stage. Therefore, they would never be able to go through the front line simply by disguising themselves. We are not fast enough to escape from the attack of that powerhouse at the Great Vehicle stage before reaching the territory of mankind. Zhang Hongyun said in a low voice. They had entered the campsite at the front line. Looking at those thickly dotted restrictive spells, they felt quite helpless. Zhu Kei nodded, for he knew they could never force their way out of this place. This battlefield was too large. He could not ensure the divine escape spell could teleport them to a place closer to the mankind's territory each time. If they were teleported back to the campsite of the Heaven Orc tribe, they would find themselves in great trouble. At this time, we have to count on those curse letters. Zhu Kei said with a faint smile. Zhang Hongyun shook her head embarrassedly. She believed Zhu Kei, but those curse letters felt just like child's play to her. Even she would throw that curse letter away after receiving it. Nobody would believe in it. Little girl, one's heart is always incomprehensible. Someone will believe it eventually and the influence caused by those letters could be quite horrible. Zhu Kei said with a smile, This kind of curse letter used to be quite popular on Earth. It was forwarded crazily in the QQ groups and Q zone. After several years' disappearance, it appeared in the microblog and WeChat moments again. None of the wise people believed in this curse because it was totally stupid. However, some people still believed it and forwarded it. When wise people received such a curse letter, even if they didn't believe it, they thought it was really annoying. Therefore, 
some wise people also started to forward them because they thought it would be better to be safe than sorry. In this way, a meaningless curse letter caused great influence. At this time, a disturbance in many campsites of the Heaven Orc tribe had been caused by those curse letters. In a campsite at the rear part of the battlefield, a giant who was more than two meters high found a curse letter left by Zuke on the first day. The curse letter was placed under his pillow with a corner exposed. This giant liked a female soldier in his campsite. He wrote a letter to her several days ago, but he hadn't got any response yet. When he saw a letter under his pillow, he was wild with joy. He didn't find others in the camp, so he picked up the letter and started to read it. After a short while, the giant's face darkened with rage. But face of the exploding heavens faction? What the hell is this? He was so angry, and he didn't believe the content of the letter at all. Then, he continued to read the rest of the paragraphs of the letter, which told him that if he didn't forward this letter to others, his parents would die. But if he forwarded it, he would win the heart of the girl he liked. The last sentence aroused his interest. After pondering it for a while, he made up his mind. Humphrey, I got this letter from someone, so I could also send this letter to others. Anyway, this is just bullshit. There is nothing to fear. The giant murmured as he took out some writing paper and started to copy that letter. That night. He sneaked into several nearby camps and put the letters under the pillows of some soldiers he didn't like. What he wanted was just to disgust those people, and he didn't have high expectations about it. At the same time, in a camp for female soldiers, a female soldier was thinking hard with a pen in her hand. Bang! After a while, she put down a pen and stood up casually. I am already an adult. How could I write a love letter? This is ridiculous. He said he likes me and I will come directly to him. After saying that, she walked out of her camp. When the giant who had sent all the curse letters went back to his camp, he was dumbfounded by what he saw. The female soldier he liked stood in front of him. Then, she hugged the giant into her arms and said loudly, From now on, you are my man. Holy crap. The giant's heart exploded in wild joy. His body started to tremble and his eyes got large. Does this mean the curse letter is for real? Dot. On the second day, four people who received curse letters from the giant were totally disgusted. Two of them tore the letter into pieces in anger and tried to find out who had sent the letters. However, the other two, although they were also annoyed, didn't want to let it go. They doubted the letters had been sent by their enemies, so they decided to keep them going. They copied another four letters and sent them out quietly. At the same time, the giant who started a relationship with his beloved girl was quite happy. After getting drunk, he told this secret to his close friends. Someone considered his secret as a joke. Someone kept it in his heart. In this way, Dozens of curse letters appeared in the campsite in three to four days. Even the general received several letters, which almost drove him mad. The same scenarios were going on all over the rest of more than 100 campsites. There were so many soldiers in those campsites. Like the giant, several lucky guys got what they wanted after sending out the curse letters. It was an ordinary small probability event. However, they believed their good luck was caused by the curse letters. Therefore, they started to tell this secret to their close friends. In this way, the secret of the curse letter passed quickly from mouth to mouth. A disturbance caused by the curse letters started to unsettle many campsites of the Heaven Orc tribe. In less than a week, even the campsites near the front line were also influenced. The entire troop of the Heaven Orc tribe was in danger. Hey, have you heard about that curse letter that is being widely spread in the campsites? Yes, it is said that the ghost of the exploding heavens faction's buttface created this curse. Damn, it is absolutely a fake curse. Nonsense. D.A. Who, who is serving in the campsite next to ours, tore up that letter. Yesterday, he received a letter from home, which told him his parents died in the mystery land. Holy crap. Really? For sure. Also, I've heard that a Naiu who is serving in a campsite in the rear area, made four copies of that letter and sent them out. In the same night, his beloved woman A who showed her love to him. Damn, I have to admit I also received a curse letter. What? Who are you? Your face is unfamiliar to us. A, I'm AK, and this is my woman, Ahong. Buddies, 
could we have a word here, just now, my woman is beside me, I can't tell you the truth. Actually, I made hundreds of copies of that curse letter and sent them out. As a result, Ahong jumped on my bed in the same night. Dot.